Because you've got powerful you... legs. How did you get the physique? Was it gym or how did you get the physique? Um, I've always been that. She's actually female. not got powerful legs. Do you shower in your dressing room? Do you have a shower on the day of a fight or not? Tell us about the tattoos. Shut the fuck up, oh, you yeah. little prick. But then I've got the phoenix. Hey, prick. So I'll take it from Bob every day of the week. An absolute disgrace. I'm I sure no one will mind. Move him out of here, then, Darren. Ricky had to go over for his fighter because he risked getting abducted and sold into sexual I never said that. <laughs> Both have been rape victims. I'm not watching Frank Buglioni live on Saturday night. Get out of your mind. Jesus Christ, get yourself a life. He's actually a uh, priest. Yeah, yeah. It's because his brother John Fury eye gouged him. What have I told you all this time? He's going to end up sucked out, fucked out, looking for a hand out. Boxing, um, Natter's messenger group. Whoa, they're going to, oh, I'm going to be the king. Jade bump, you know what I'm saying? Welcome everybody to the 563rd edition of the Boxing Asylum Nuthouse. Uh, glad to be part of the Sports Social Network. We're on YouTube, we're on Spotify, we're on Apple and all their stuff. Uh, wherever you can find a podcast, we're probably there. Maybe even with that dreaded E mark next to us for explicit because we're dirty and uh, against the grain, against the status quo, and all that other crap people like to say. Anyhow, with me today, Steve Wellings, Andy Patterson. I'm your host, Matt DiGionardo. Happy to be here this week, back from Puerto Rico. Uh, well, maybe we'll get into that later. Uh, what we'll get into right now was what I would call an epic card coming from Saudi Arabia that started around 8 o'clock a.m. my time. And uh, wrapped up somewhere around 5.30 my time, I believe. It uh, It was not for the faint of heart, but there was some good stuff mixed in there. Of course, topping the card, Anthony Joshua with three knockdowns and two rounds with Francis Ngannou. The last one being one final shot to finish the show and take out Ngannou, knocking him unconscious. Steve, uh, good work from Joshua. D did what Fur Fury couldn't do. Definitely brings in some more questions about what shape Fury was in for that fight. How seriously took it. But from the opening bell, basically, Steve, Joshua dominating, throwed that little uh, just kind of push out right hand, knocked down Ngannou in the first round, then some overhands in the second round to finish the job. I mean, he, he really looked like a million bucks, at least compared to how Fury looked. Uh, yeah, I mean, he absolutely did. One thing I will address just quickly, I see the boys putting it in the chat there, and I did see it in sort of casual chat groups uh, over the weekend about people saying that the final shot was like a dive or something from Garno. apparently. I, I never... <laughs> I must admit. That was his never... spirit dive into his body, mate, to get the fuck out the road of the shot. That's what it was. <laughs> I, never, I never entertained that myself, no. <laughs> he might have had a dream that he dived and hit the bottom of the pool. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but that isn't even the craziest shit I heard. I, I, I'll tell another one before it slips out of my head. But amongst all the Ryan Garcia shit, one podcast, I, I can't remember what it was, it was like a YouTube thing, suggested that the whole um, Ryan on the Twitter spaces and all the stuff he was coming off with, he'd just done it on purpose to try and <laughs> hype up the pay-per-view sales. <laughs> and I'm thinking, if you're on the fence about buying Haney Garcia or any of these big shows, then you're hearing Ryan coming on Twitter spaces. <laughs> talking about going into the woods of Bohemian Grove and having all these god-awful things done to him. If that matter, he's going to push you over the edge to buy the pay-per-view if you're undecided at that point, then you need to seriously examine yourself, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, I just don't know if I want to buy this or not. You know, Garcia says he was raped when he was two. Oh, fuck. Well, I I'm in. 
Right, I'm in. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, yeah, back to the matter in hand. I, I don't think the big fella dived, to be honest. But uh, as for Joshua, he did what you're supposed to do against this level of opponent. He stood off at first. He was cautious initially. I don't, I don't mind that. He just had a little look at him, got the jab going, uh, looked at what Ngannou had to offer. And then as soon as Ngannou turned southpaw, he pounced. And one of the key factors, I think, that Fury didn't do, what Joshua did, is he didn't allow Ngannou to grow in any kind of confidence. Got stuck straight into him. I love that finish. It just showed killer instinct. The man was hurt. AJ jumped straight on him, laid him out cold, exactly what was needed. And I was writing an article on my Substack on Saturday that AJ had kind of saved boxing skin, saved boxing's blushes which is kind of true because the sport could not afford another slip-up. The longer this fight went on, if Joshua was to look bad, then the whole sport looks bad, really, with Ngannou coming over from a different discipline. And I know we'll talk about... ridiculous. I mean, it was yeah. it, it was like uh, seeing Usyk go over into MMA and almost submit John Jones. It, <laughs> it's just... It, it was it was when, when uh, Ngannou... Uh, knockdown fury. It was it was not a good look on the sport and and uh, yeah, I mean, great great on Joshua for just saving, preserving some sense that the sport we love is actually difficult. Yeah, exactly. You can't just come over and do what you want. Embarrassment, shame, humiliation, all that. I'm not even mentioning Eddie Hearn. But as I was saying, we'll talk about it later. But the Joshua win now over Joseph Parker is looking better with age, few of the wins performances as well, looking better with age. And for Joshua, I commend his motivation as well. I was thinking about this while I was watching the show, all frigging nine hours of it, as Andy mentioned earlier. You know, all that money in the bank, he's got a lot of fame. He was knocked out by Ruiz, dominated by Usyk in the first fight, did better in the second, still lost it. He's shown a lot of mental steel, really. I know he has all these demons, and he tried to go on a rant again on Saturday, on Friday night and uh, Adi, I think, is, is the interviewer, did his best to keep hold of that microphone. He wasn't going to let him wander off into all these strange states of yeah, consciousness. I, I, Steve, I'm kind of glad that he did. So it just tells us it's like not in defeat where Josh was just, you know, an oddball. He's just kind of fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's a, he's, a, he's a faux philosopher, but he's shown a lot of mental steel for all of his demons to come back from the things that he's gone through in the ring and all. Uh, the problem is he, he wants the winner of Fury versus Usyk, and I don't think he beats either of those guys. I think stylistically, well, Usyk's already beat him over 24 rounds. Fury as well, switched on. It was all wrong for him. And as for Ngannou, I think his fight with Fury gave us a false interpretation of his skill set and also of his limitations. Yes, he's physically strong. He's awkward. He's a problem. How good is his defence? We didn't know. We saw on the weekend. We heard all week. He's never been put down. He's never been hurt in these four-ounce gloves or two-ounce gloves, whatever the MMA people uh, use. Well, he got knocked out absolutely cold, so there you go. Yeah, and I... um, Well, we'll get to that in a second. Andy, I... uh. I, I just I was thoroughly impressed with AJ. I just thought he held his own. He saw the shot. He 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 found his moments. Um, and uh, afterwards, he gave uh, you know credit to Ben Davidson in the Ben Davidson Fitness Center. And I got to tell you, I mean, I think this is a good combination with these two. I know we've given Ben Davidson a lot of flack for this, that, and the other, but I think Joshua has looked better under Ben than he has in the last three years, four years. I think he's looked better, mate, since he probably probably the best he's looked since he left probably mate, McCracken, who really was the one that kind of taught him up through the amateur system and that, and then obviously he kind of then supposedly took a back seat as he turned pro, but eventually then came in the corner and that. He's, you know, obviously he's been flipping between trainers and he seems to have kind of settled on one at least. And that. Who, to be fair, I think Davidson's just basically, basically kept it simple with him possibly and just told him, listen, you're a big dude, you go straight shots, put them together and... You know, just see where the chips fall. And to be fair, as, as Steve mentioned, in that it's, it saves boxing blushes to, to a point, in my opinion. But see, at the same time, let that be a reminder as to what can happen when someone who isn't a fully trained boxer, I know he's a combat fighter, right? So there's it probably even a sell out a wee bit, but he's not a fully trained boxer, right? And something like that can happen. You know, and you're seeing it with these YouTubers, you're seeing it with other you know types of fights and that as well. You know, somebody somewhere is going to end up, you know, well, we saw it, but he got badly knocked out. But someone could end up getting badly injured. And we just go to maybe mention that as well. But off the back here as well, as as well, it's just a money grab, really. And I expected Ngannou really to be kind of 
to go a wee bit but longer. Someone, but he once gave me was, fifty million dollars to do that. Mate, and yeah, well, fuck, I'll grab that cash all goddamn. He, he started no by that actually, and then he, as I say, once he got chinned with that with that first shot that put him down, and that that was really it. And you said as well, once he stepped forward and started putting the gas down, and that that was the end. It didn't let him get uh, get his cell reset or anything like that. And I love the camera action when it cut to Fury. Actually, when you you seen Eddie like basically sprinting to the ring like he did against Froch against Booty, and you got Fury sitting there like fucking hell, and then he's like having to clap his hands with, with his Excellency and and uh, and, and with Frank. But it was a marathon as well as you mentioned, nine and a bit hours, man. I mean, it was really questioning the stamina uh, involved as well. But I I bought the pay per view right before I left for work. And I got back from work, and I was able to watch the last four hours of the fucking. Christ I mean, it's, it's, I think the prelim started at three, three o'clock your time. Um, I think the main event didn't start to at least close to be about after midnight, possibly. So uh, the was... lucky thing for the Brits who went and Thank attended the, sh- the the great thing for those that went and attended the show, though, Andy, is it ended late. But at least they didn't have to worry about catching a train back home. The transportation <laughs> sounded far better in Saudi Arabia. Aye, aye, we'll wait. You can take Frank Warren out to UK, but he always gets you in the end, doesn't he? No matter where he is in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, they had a lot of dead air in that as well. They had, a, I forget what fight it was. It might have been the, the McGann fight. It was an early knockout. And then they spent like the next 30 minutes, 40 minutes just filling dead air. I don't know if his excellency had to go for a shite or something. Like that. I don't know what it was. They just but... needed people pissing in the beer cans and stuff, Andy, and then it aye, might as well have been at the I, copper box. Aye, my body's lying in the. <laughs> and the gangways I, and stuff. I think the folks, you know, if they're organizing it and trying to time it down, I think that either one or both of these happened and that they thought that Ball was going to stop Vargas or that Zhang and Parker was going to end in the stoppage. And it just, uh, that kind of caught him with an hour and 15 minutes of surprise. Yeah. But yeah, I think I said last week, I expected Josh would po- uh, possibly get the stoppage. Um, but I think it was, go- it was going to be late. But um once, what did you say? Once you started landing the power shots and that, obviously the confidence is up. You seen the way that Nangano went down off that first shot. He went down heavy, and you could tell it when he got up. That the legs just were not solid enough. And you mean he's fought? What is he now? He's forty. What forty one, forty two year old? Nangano? No, he's thirty seven. Well, he's still still fair age, I suppose. Not, but you know, fair play to him and that. He's he's cashed it. Um, I was really I just as. In the build up to the fight because it was a long night and that I was actually going through some of the rankings. I was I actually didn't know that WBC actually put him in, in the top ten rankings after that Fury fight. Yeah, they did. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yep. absolute fucking clout chasing wankers, man. Yeah, he fucking came close to beating the heavyweight champion of the world. I don't know where you should put him, but you got to put him somewhere. Well, after a defeat, on his back. I'm talking about when when Ganu fought when I mean beat Fury. I mean he put him he almost beat him. I mean you put him down. The scorecards were close. It's you got to put him in somewhere it, based on that performance. You know I mean he ran him as close as anybody really has that uh, wasn't wild or putting him on his ass. Um, so I I don't know I I kind of I'd like to kind of see him stick around and see what he could do uh, against regular kind of contender levels. Like, what would you guys think about Ngannou versus Andy Ruiz? Get Fat Andy off the fucking I think couch. Fat Andy would make him look silly, to be honest. He's only here for these kinds of novelty fights, isn't he? The Fury one was a bit of a swing, literally. Yeah. Managed to get, you know, get the knockdown and put himself into the stratosphere. If he could have fiddled Joshua around for a while as well. Then he would have got another opportunity. People talking about him fighting Wilder. Well, look what Joshua's right hand did to him. Well, they're saying that Wilder couldn't cock the right hand whatsoever against Parker. But no, I don't think they they'd put few uh, Engano in in any of these lesser fights against nah. Ruiz. Be too dangerous without having the name value. If you know what I mean, Matty. Yeah, I, I I'd, I'd agree with that as well, Matty, because you can see the point as well. See after the Fury fight, how quick was he out with that offer for Engano to fight Joshua? Let's wait and see what kind of offers he gets now moving forward. I doubt he's going to be getting the, these 10, exactly. 15, 20 million dollar offers to fight Andy Ruiz in Saudi Arabia. I don't opinion, like. know if it's going to be that high, but they're still yeah, going I mean, to be no, I mean, seven I'm... figures. I don't know, mate. I mean, he's been badly knocked out there. Badly knocked out. Hearn knew the score, man. For once, he was clever, wasn't he? He jumped on the bandwagon straight away. And he, yeah. he, he had an inkling that he was going to get destroyed, and that was the one off, and he built, you know, off the back of that. that and was again, I, I, not to defend Fury, but Fury has always been his only worst enemy. If he isn't, if he isn't switched on or on the ball, and that shit like that happens, and that's he can come a cropper like that, he gets cut. 
clowning about whatever it is and that doesn't take it serious. There was allegations before the fight and that that he, he hadn't, you know, he'd been in camp, but it wasn't like a proper training camp. It was simply just basically taking over allegedly and you know making weight or keeping the weight down or whatever it was and that. But Fury, if I was Fury, I'd be worried with the fact that I mean he's cutting camp again. He's been getting cut in fights. I, I'd be worried about just how easily he's getting cut. Have you man. seen? The, have you seen that, the videos thin, coming out? That thin liquor skin, man. Well, man, have you seen the videos coming out of Saudi the last couple of days before the weigh-in? Or the day of the weigh-in? What, where he had a little something on his shirt? Well, dude, that's... Uh, <laughs> we've heard... we've heard the, Well, I've heard stories as, as to how people... We'll say Mike Tyson, for example, can get his hands on weed over in Saudi Arabia, right? So, <laughs> if, uh, if Uncle Mike can get his hands on stuff, you know, I'd imagine others can get their hands on stuff if they need it. So, uh, it doesn't look good anyway, put it that way. No, it doesn't. But that said, if he can beat Usyk after abusing cocaine, that's a pretty incredible feat. I bet you still have to beat Usyk, mate. That's the thing. That's true. And I say he's sober, man. Have you not seen all the videos? Tyson uh, Fury motivation. Never drink alcohol. Yeah. I just think Matty as well. Just think Matty. See what happened to um, Serrano last week with a hairspray running into her eye. Fury can't kind of use that excuse to kind of get you the music fight. <laughs> Fucking bald bastard, right? Feel his pain. Feel his pain. Anyhow, Jamie throwing in 199 saying, Welcome back, Ty and Booth. Knock out Chaos and Dudley. Chaos and Dudley. Uh, yeah, well, um, good for Ty and Booth. But we do appreciate the 199, Jamie. Uh, very much so. We also uh, appreciate Mr. Jason Chukwu for coming aboard here. Uh, Jason, I'm sure you want to voice your opinion on AJ. Have at it, sir. Yeah, I'm on. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, man. Um, I was in a, I was in a pub, a pub, like a shisha lounge in Bexley Heath called like 2 5, and I was watching. I was on the way home. I was at a bus stop, and I just saw, oh, shit, the fight's on in, and they said to get in, you have to pay like £2.50 for a JTO, and that was like the cheapest drink, so I just paid that. Watched about the last seven rounds of uh, Parker Zhang. Parker got dropped, but he did the, I can't believe how Parker's came back. It's, like, it's amazing. It just shows you, like, it's not over till it's over, you know what I mean? So, yeah, and then I just watched the main event. And I was I was watching the first round, you know, like, and Garni's footwork was off. Even someone was talking to me saying that when you saw the first 30 seconds, you just knew and Garni was going to get stopped quickly. Then I missed the, I missed the first knockdown because just outside the shisha down, someone got beat up because apparently they beat up a jail, allegedly. Some craziness in there, but I don't know. And then I just missed, I basically missed the rest of the first round. I saw the other knockdown. Just like, yeah, Joshua's back, but... You have to be honest, I mean, and Garni was his second fight, but like you lot said, Fury was on coke, innit? So he didn't take, and you know, when Fury is not in a big fight, he's always, he looks like shit, innit? So, what will happen? Hearn, Hearn did what he, he did, you know, jump on the band. He's about to be in a big fight, Jason. It's the biggest fight of ever. If he can't stay fit and on focus now, when can he? I know, but you, you know, when you've got addiction, like, you know what I mean? Like, I've got my gambling addiction, porn addiction, like, and, you know, Fury's got coke addiction, and when you're addicted, it's hard, mm. like, you know, it's really hard. Oh, I appreciate that. Uh, well, I think for the for the Usyk fight he's going to take it seriously, but the thing is, I'm worried about if Fury wins, is he going to duck Kurgovic? Like that's that's what I'm wondering. Like you know, because Fury Fury, if it's not a big fight, he's not motivated. That's what pisses me off. Well, if Usyk wins, we'll fight any kind. You know, them Eastern Europeans, them are serious. Like I always say, they brought white guys back in the box, and so you know, I think, I think if, the, if Usyk the hills, wins and they don't have a rematch clause in there with Fury and. You know, it's a you know they want it enough because it'll make money. I think Usyk retires. I I don't think he you think, keeps you think fighting. A hundred percent, hundred percent. I know he, 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 he. I know he's getting on. He's getting old as well. When he's getting on as well, but he just he gives he gives off that mentality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just yeah. I yeah. think I, I I just get the the feeling that that he's going to call it because what's what's next from a trilogy with AJ and two when he's already won the first two fights. Eh, I don't know. Yeah, Maybe if Wilder can get a good win coming out of it again. Um, I don't know that anyone yeah. is banging at the door for him to be fighting Parker. If Zhang would have beaten Parker. Maybe that fight has some legs. Um, Hergovich, uh, you mentioned him, he's a dark horse in the division. Nobody really seems to want to fight him. Um, an underrated fighter, uh, 100%. But, yeah, I just see Usyk retiring after this. I, I just don't see any purpose for him because he's going to make good money on this. you got to be thinking everything cleared. He's going to be putting $20, $25 million yeah. in his pocket. Oh, yeah, and this this for the, li the lineal and undisputed. Like, this is the first time since Lennox and Evander Holyfield like, when I was in that reception. 
tremendous. I was like the foot, like the lineal and undisputed. Like this is the mat. This is like this is for everything. This is the whole shebang, so, isn't it? So it's like. So you're saying the it's going to end in a con- saying it's going to end in a controversial draw. Then where's the fight? It's taking place in Saudi, right? Yeah. Well, you mentioned mm-hmm. Lewis versus Holyfield. That first fight ended in a draw. You know. Oh yeah, the didn't it? Yeah, everyone said Lewis draw. Mm-hmm. And then Lewis, you know, he he proved it in the rematch. But um, yeah. That would, I don't know, uh, but like, you, that would, Usyk, so that would, yeah. if, if anyone's going to get shafted, it'll be Usyk because he's from Ukraine, and I'm sure Saudi are cool with Russia. You know, what I mean, I think that's how it's going to be. Like, and it, I've, I've seen the Saudis chill with Tyson Fury, so I'm guess, I'm guessing that yeah, I, Usyk I don't, might get shafted. I don't know about that entirely from that perspective because or maybe I think, I'm thinking too much. And I'm thinking. Well, much. well, I don't know. That's I always been your problem, Jason. I, well, you're thinking, but <laughs> I, I think that. Russia and Saudi Arabia kind of see each other as competitors in the energy market. So I don't know that that relationship is that firm, especially with Iran being cozy with uh, Russia, you know. Mm, I hear that. And I'm really into politics right now. I don't even... Re- like, I know... Um, what's it? Uh, Israel's beefing... Um, what's that country called? Syria, but like... I know they've always been beefing, but this new little beef that's been going on, I'll be real, I don't know too much about it. I don't know what's going on with Assad and all of that. I hear a bit, but, like, I'm not really in the loop. And I want to hear the truth from someone, but people got their agendas, isn't it? Like, it's forgot family members who say, oh, back Syria, but, like... Yeah. We've got an I agenda, say, stick to the box. Can I just say one thing? Can I, can I just say one <laughs> thing as well? Yeah, Where I know. I, went, I got, I got, off, I got Go off topic. Can I just say one thing? Can I say one Go thing? Go ahead, Chuck. What, what Femi's done is he's brought boxing back into, like, it's not a joke. It's a serious thing because, like, you got to understand, Tommy Fury went 12 rounds with KSI. KSI was probably in private school in Watford when Tommy Fury started as an amateur and for him to go 12 rounds like it's, it, it's like it don't it don't look good on boxing same thing with Jake Paul man's a YouTuber or Logan Paul whichever one is their YouTubers and yet Tommy Fury went the distance with them man so it, like what does it say about the sport and then Fury Tyson Fury the lineal champ got dropped by a guy who's had his first ever fight no amateur no white collar nothing so like we got Femi's like he's brought the sport back into like into a good Good like light, isn't it? Like, I'm not really good at words, but you get what I'm trying to say. But can I just say one thing? Froch and um Johnny Nelson are a bunch of fucking pagans. Because when when Femi was on the sky, they were dick riding him all day long. Oh, he's better than Muhammad Ali, this, that, and that. But as soon as he fucks up to the zone, oh he's a shit, they're chatting shit. Froch is a cunt. I see why you lot don't like him as well. He's a complete dickhead because he switches sides like a female. Me, I don't switch sides, like I always say, three R Kelly to the end. I stay I stay low, but Froch and Nelson, they're like they're like women. They switch sides. That's what I've got to say. I'm out. Are you still team Macaulay, Jason? Are you still team Macaulay? I know. But again, but you know what he did wrong? He, he didn't earn with Hearn. He left Hearn, and that's why his career is fucked, isn't it? So, mm. earn with Hearn. Yeah. Hearn is the best promoter since Don King. If you're not with Matchroom, there's no fights for you. Exactly. <laughs> Anything I'm, else? I mean, I've said, I've, 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 I think I've said what I need to say. In it. I've just, I'll be rambling all day now. I've, 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 I've shot my load towards... No, nothing, else, so I have, it? nothing else I have before it. we let you go, Jason? No, nah, man, I've said what I need to say. Man. No worries, my, no worries, my man. You take care of yourself, and we'll yeah, catch yeah. you next time around, all right? All right, then, yeah. You got it. Take care, buddy. Bye, Jason. Bye. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Who who else hopped on the call here with us? Hamed? Yeah. Yes, yes, guys. How's it going? It's been a long time. Yeah, did you come When did you come on with us? A couple months ago, maybe? The last time I was on was after AJ Pulev. So how many? Oh, years that's is even that? longer. I was no, we had Ahmed on before. Ahmed, this is, this is Ahmed, not on. Ahmed. God damn it! I, I'm going dyslexic here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. I I was impressed with AJ's performance, but I personally think some people are going a bit over the top because, like, I've seen people saying he's he should be ranked number one or two as a heavyweight, but then you compare his last four opponents to. Even someone like Joseph Parker, I don't know how you could rank him higher than number three because he has beaten Parker, so fair enough. I could rank him number three or four, but he's been fighting guys like Kalenius, Franklin, Naganu, and what was it, Otto Wallin. Meanwhile, Parker's got two wins over Wilder and Higovic. And he had, even though he lost, he had a tough fight with Joyce. I don't know if AJ beats all those guys if he fought them instead of the recent uh, opposition. Like I do think AJ's improving and he, it looks like he's got his maybe mojo back and he's in a better place mentally. But 
I need to see more before I start seeing he beats Usyk in the third fight. Like, because I've seen some people saying he would win the third fight. Uh, with Fury, I think Fury's hot and cold. So I have to see how Fury looks against uh, Usyk. But even still, I'd still think Fury would be a favorite. Like, do you guys still think Fury's a favorite? Or he's with the it... books, he's, he's still barely a favorite, but it's been tightening up. It has absolutely been tightening up with the odds makers. So she, she, uh, be honest, she, she because she because of the recent shenanigans and all the outer ring ledge stuff is supposed to be going on. I think people are getting kind of a bit kind of tired and fed up with it that they're kind of maybe seeing that it's maybe kind of it's it's, it's there's, a, there's a good chance you know you don't hear much for music like you know his, he's just basically quiet in the background seems to be kind of do, working away. Fury, on the other hand, I don't know, I really don't know. There's, there's, well, no Fury definitely, are. Fury definitely was nowhere near hundred percent because I think the Nagano Nagano, fight. Nah. Yeah, because if he was, then that's a worry. Like, because after how Nagano looked last night, and how Fury looked in that fight, and then against guys like Wilder, even Dylan White, like I, I don't know if he even he trained for that fight because he was very heavy and like his demeanor after the fight and before the fight was. Off, uh, AJ may have his number because I thought after AJ beat Klitschko, I thought AJ may have been the only guy to beat him back then. I know a lot of people thought Wilder might beat him, but I thought if he could take Wilder's right hand away, I always favored Fury. Like, uh, I still want to see AJ and Wilder fight. Do you guys agree or not? Because I posted that on Twitter, but some people are saying AJ Wilder. Want... Mm. I, I, I want I Wilder. I think Wilder needs a good W at this point. That's in time the thing. Uh, he needs it, he needs to show that he's no like so like you know he's still living off the LSD treatment that he had the, yeah. whenever it was not ayahuasca. Yeah, Argentina. exactly. He he came back in that ring after God knows how, over a year, and then yeah, he'd done yeah. nothing. You were waiting for him to kick off, man, but he'd done nothing the entire fight. So as Matty says, he needs to he needs to pick up a big or a decent one. No, but the reason points, I agree with that, he got he got to be more active. Him and Ruiz have been way too act- inactive. But just look, uh, Parker's fight in Zag, and then it seems to me like Eddie Hearn's just gonna try and make AJ fight all of Fury's former opponents because the guy I'm hearing they may put him in with is Dilla White. Like I would rather see the Wilder fight than a Dilla White rematch. I don't know what you guys think about that, but if it's not Hergovich, I don't mind the Wilder fight because I can't think of any other options. I would yeah. I would be sticking with like you said Joshua, uh, Fury Joyce. or Yuzik or who was the other heavyweight? Well, Parker obviously is new back in the picture, which is a bit of a shame. I'd I like to, to see, see Parker against Hergovic. I think that's a... well, you got Hergovic there as, as well, obviously. But I just I just wanted to see Zhang do something different, just to see something fresher at the top end because other guys have had their chance. Looking quickly, looking at the rankings, Dubois still trying to do the build up. Jared Anderson's a bit of a mess just now, getting arrested outside the ring. Martin McCauley is waiting for a phone call. Hergovic, as Matty mentioned, No be kidding. Okay. Martin McCauley just kind of sitting out there in the world. Number one. That's crazy, WBA. isn't it, man? The lack of opportunities. And Hergovic as well, yeah. man. I mean, yeah, wasn't, that, wasn't, that that motherfucker out, wasn't that motherfucker out there trying to raise money like through a GoFundMe or something <laughs> like that? Like, like and then you've can't got, get a title fight. Throw me some bo- a bone here. Hang on. You've, you've got Justice Hooney getting stretched a little bit there on, the, uh, on, on Saudi card. And you've got Frank. You're coming down the list of Frank Sanchez and Agat Caballero, a Jagba. It's, guys a, that it's label, a more you know. interesting division than I think people give it credit for. Ant B says Wilder versus Kanoski. Like at this point in time, I think I take Andy Kanoski. against Kanoski. Kanoski just got knocked out by some uh, genuine. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, by is that him, is that, uh, the Polish guy got knocked out in one round. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He got knocked out of Hellenius and that. No, no, after that, recently, by some yeah. Jenny, but not a PBC. He, under car- oh. he, got yeah, yeah. St- he got stopped by Hellenius two fights in a row. Then he got stopped by ah, Joe Cusamano. And then he got stopped he by... He got stopped last week or somebody. Some, ah, it was last week or the week of four. He got, he, got ice, he got stopped in one round. It was a fucking mercy stoppage against the ropes. Yeah, he, oh. that's not a good fight. For no, 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 no. Mate, well, I don't think any fight's good enough for Wilder at this point, mate. I mean, as I say, I've mentioned the names there. Outside of the top three names. I no, I know, agree. I don't know who he'd pick, to be Ruiz fair. Ruiz or Zhang, especially... Uh, Ruiz isn't both, even ranked, mate. But, Ruiz isn't even fighting. It doesn't mate. matter. He has name recognition. He has a win over AJ. Um, so, again, I, I would... Wilder against either Ruiz or Zhang, I think is a necessary fight for all three involved if they want to prove some relevancy to move forward. Just on, a, just on that Polishman, that wasn't a journeyman, by the way. That was a, that was undefeated pro. 
that Polish guy knocked out Kod- yeah, Kodnaki. Yeah, yeah, that was a bad knockout. But Jang has a rematch close with Parker and Fury and Usyk. Fury, yeah, Fury and Usyk also have a two-way rematch close. And according to Fury, with uh, Ariel Hawani, he was saying it don't matter like what happens in the first fight. That's a two-way rematch close. So the reason I mentioned Wilder, I agree. If he if he can't fight um, Hergovic or any of those guys like Zhang Parker rematch or what is it Fury Usyk, then yeah, Kabayel is not a bad opponent or. The guys you mentioned, like Bacoli, th- those are good opponents, but I don't know if they would take uh, that risk. Like, the Wilder fight is still a big fight, and I think that's like a winnable fight. I just don't want to see the Dillaway rematch. Like, th- that's I'll, a fight. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Hamed. I think, you know, Wilder against Bacoli, I don't think it would happen, but I couldn't see Bacoli turning it down. The guy's trying to dig up funds on GoFundMe with that Saudi money <laughs> bouncing around. He's yeah. not going to turn down that payday. What about Bacoli AG, though? Could you see that happening? Bacoli, I know the well, the sparring partners, but would yeah, would that be a fight? dangerous. Risk I, Bacoli, 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 Bacoli is ranked AG's number. Then. I would never take that risk. Bacoli's ranked number one with the WBA, so at this point, I'd imagine he'll just he'll probably just need to sit and wait for that phone call to come, or you know, to get mandated. Because yeah. there's nobody, he, he, there's nobody lined up to fight him. He brings nothing to the table in terms of intrigue, money. Titles, anything of that ilk, and I don't care what Billy Nelson's got to say about it, that because really, we've, we've seen what his level is. It's, it's no world level, unfortunately. Is it kind of maybe the kind of like part below it? Um, but yeah, I think I think you just need to sit and wait, wait for his turn. Yeah, before I go, I wanted to ask you guys a question because I've not seen much of Higovic. Like, because I, I think I was working that night when AJ Nusik, uh, the night before when AJ Nusik had a rebat. So I was pretty much asleep during the whole undercard. Like, I think I did a like a late 12 hour shift, but I I have, still haven't seen that Higovic and Zhang fight. But how would you guys think uh, Higovic and Parker fight would play out? I think that's one of the most interesting fights in the division at this point in time. I'm trying to think how Parker has done against Southpaws other than Zhang. Well, Ergovic is not Southpaw, is he? But it'd be I a thought, battle. Yeah, I thought he was, wasn't he? Is he? Oh, no, no, he's not. He's, he's no, not Southpaw. He it'd be a battle of the jabs, orthodox jabs, I was thinking, you see. You know, he's quite stiff, Ergovic, and he came on late against Zhang, but Zhang's um, energy ga- tank went, and Parker seems to have found this great energy tank now. Remember against Takam when he was blowing out of his arse after five rounds, but he, he seems to be yeah. able to last the distance pretty well now. Yeah, I was at the Parker AG fight. I thought Parker kind of laid the blueprint for how Usyk could beat uh, AG, and I was getting ridiculed for months after after I seen what Usyk did to Gassiev. I just thought Usyk was all wrong for him because I thought if Parker committed a bit more, he could have beaten AG. I don't know if he would have got the decision because I think some of those scorecards were a bit too wide, but I think Parker was a bit underrated until the last two fights. So it'll be interesting to see how this division plays out. I, I think Zhang obviously came in too heavy, but I'm, I'm looking forward to the rematch. Uh, that should be a good fight as well. Parker's it was the hugging, wasn't it? It was the hugging, sorry, in the Parker-AJ fight. That was the problem. Yeah, he, yeah. he started grabbing him after about round six, didn't he? Sorry, Matty. Well, I think Parker's problem is is when he's struggled in some fights that he could have won is he's just like too passive at times. And like I, I did like his increased urgency that he had against uh, Zhang despite the knockdowns. But, you know, that's something Hergovic has a problem with too, right? Like the fights where he's been run a little bit close uh, that have been, you know, uh, close or controversial, he just kind of gets passive and he lets his opponents be in a fight that they shouldn't be in. I mean, the guy can clearly punch. Uh, who, who the who the hell was it that he just? Yeah, I mean, he just obliterated in a round a couple of months ago. I Mark Demuri. I was at Mark Demuri and David Day's fight. I don't think Mark Demuri that good because I was a big fan of his, so I did go to that fight. But I, there's a clip of um, Hergovic and Wilder sparring when Hergovic is 18. Have you guys checked that out? That's where Hergovic looks really good because he's yeah. like 18. That's yeah. That, that was impressive at that age to do that to Walder. Like, uh, I think he was a seasoned professional at that Interesting. time. Interesting. I'll check that out. Here's one I'll trade back to you if you haven't seen it. If, if you haven't seen the sparring with Terrence Crawford and Carlos Adamas, that's worth your, your viewing too. 
Yeah, I'll check that. Out. I, I'm, I haven't heard about that. So this part, yeah, Adamus is a big guy as well. Really. He's meant to be was yep. he a middleweight. Yep, it was yeah. at Gleason's. I don't know how many years ago, but yeah, Crawford more than handled himself against a much bigger guy. It's it a good viewing. That's interesting because Crawford's meant to fight Eubank, isn't it? Uh, and Eubank yeah. is a couple of divisions bigger, so. Yeah, that's the rumor, and we're going to be getting into that later. There's a couple of things that happened this week, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and uh, <laughs> never a shortage of interesting things to talk about, I guess. All right. All right, I'll let you guys get to the other corner. All right, thanks hey. for having yeah, me. Yeah, good, man. Oh. See you. Thank you. Thanks, All right, you Take care, my friend. Right, Hamid. All right, nice. Right on. I had a couple people jump on with us. That was a nice little change of pace. And and since we've kind of touched on it, let's uh, move uh, to that uh, Jalei Zhang, uh, Joseph Parker fight and a fight where Parker touched the canvas twice when Zhang just touched him with those freaking toasters he has for fists. Um, but Parker um, just generally able to outwork the big man down the stretch again, just too freaking passive um, for the uh, for the large uh, southpaw. Uh, and unfortunately he found himself on the, uh, the wrong end of a uh, close decision that he could have easily won with those knockdowns, Steve. But, uh, I kind of think, uh, Zhang has no one to blame, but himself for, uh, taking his foot off the gas after the early knockdown and, and, and Parker, uh, much like AJ here, uh, having a career renaissance. Yeah. He, he took off the gas, uh, his foot off the gas. Cause I don't think there was much gas in the tank. Unfortunately, uh, Parker's movement was a problem. It kept offsetting Zhang's feet quite immobile well, that's the problem steve is after chinese food you're just hungry an hour <laughs> later just... exactly he looked like big john fisher by the end of the fight didn't he blowing out his hole after a 36 piece on each chili chicken but landed has... zero punches in round 12 <laughs> zero. zero punches that's what they said on the broadcast but zhang clearly punches like a demon we know that but he was just too heavy wasn't it nearly 300 pounds he came in at? I 291, 291. 291, yeah, ab- absolutely huge he was. And it just, he paid the price. He, he he was knackered. He was mentally tiring as well, I think, not just physically, by worrying about the late fight collapse. And I was sort of laughing last week. I can't remember who said it in the chat about the stamina and laughing at his renal failure, which came back to haunt me. I thought, oh, those are things of the past with him now. It happened against Jerry Forrest. It'll not happen again. But clearly it's not a thing of the past. He came in heavy. He's drinking a load of water now, but maybe he was desperate for a piss or didn't like the body shots or something, but he just could not last. And to, in round 10, he was knackered. Round 11, bollocks, and he just couldn't put anything on it in, the, in round 12. His, his trainer told him to go out and throw as many punches to push Parker back, and he just couldn't physically do it. And uh, one thing that wasn't being talked about, I don't think, is that uh, as active as Parker was and as impressive as he was, which he, he certainly was in, in the fight, Many of Parker's shots, uh, shots early on, I think, were hitting gloves. Uh, at one totally. point, the, ca- the camera skimmed behind them at one point, and um, Parker threw a left, right, and both of the shots bounced off Zhang's gloves, and you had Darren pa- Barker, not Parker, Darren Barker going, oh, fantastic combo for Parker. And I'm thinking, not to denigrate Parker's efforts or anything, but, I mean, those two shots did, clearly did not land. As I said, Parker did a great job. I thought he won the fight, but just an observation. A lot of the times he was throwing jabs, and especially right hands, and Jang was blocking them and, and, and evading them. But the commentary team didn't seem to notice that. Uh, I know that value of the week. They've got the commentary team up for it. Let me see if I can just bring them up for you, Matty, here quickly. I'm not sure what you watched it on, but that was that was the zone lot there. You had Adi, Kate Abdo, this Helwani guy. I think he's come over from MMA or something. Connor Ben was there. I yeah, didn't see I much saw. of Tyson Fury. David Hay, Costello. I thought the dynamic in the main event was quite weird because you had all four of them, which didn't really work. And Barry Jones is a good observer. Barker was a good fighter, not that fussed of him as a commentator. Grisham, I don't know, he brings a bit of lev- levity to the situation. Don't mind him either. But the way he was sort of bringing in Mike Costello, like he was the sort of, you know, the, the special needs member of the panel. What do you think about that, Mike? Mike's here, everybody. Let's hear what Mike's got to say. But <laughs> I don't think the four commentators work, basically. But Who's here? Whose boxing oh, yeah. resume do you think is better, Conor Ben or Kate Abdos? <laughs> Bayern oh, will get that one. <laughs> Some hard knockouts on that resume. <laughs> Matty, apparently, uh, this uh, Miss Abdo is now uh, uh, in um, relationship with Mister uh, Malik, Malik Scott. I've heard, I've heard. I've heard. She's a solid it's... journey woman. Yeah, yeah. Building a good resume. An interesting fact for you, too. If you were to stretch David Hay and Malik Scott's penises end over end, they would stretch across all of Europe. I'll tell you, what on that one? <laughs> <laughs> you 
just talking with too much authority there, so I just take your word for it. You just fucking know. They just, yeah, fucking, it, it, it's, it's kind of like Zhang. They just fucking touch you and you fall, you know? Motherfuckers, uh, to, to be so blessed. Anyhow, uh, fucking <laughs> beat bop boop uh, getting in here. Uh, this one isn't for me, Andy. I just, uh, I, I don't uh, have the knowledge, but this is all you, buddy. Another historical debate, lads. Was Max Bayer underrated, and could he have been even better had the Frankie Campbell incident not scarred him? You know, I will say that I think his greatest accomplishment was his uh, son, who ended up being uh, playing Jethro on the Beverly Hillbillies. Um, I'm trying to remember, actually, Max Bayer, but you know, to, that would be what? Well, he beat Joe Lewis. He, he went he went one and one with Joe Lewis, right? I seem to recall him being a bit of a party boy, supposedly. I don't know if he was into, uh, what do you call it? Like, you know how they used to do that? Van der, you know, what do you call it? Vanderbilt scene or whatever. And that, you know, like oh, Vaudeville. Like, Vaudeville shows and all that. But so I don't know if he was involved in that scene for a, for a period of time. But uh, I'm trying to, he fought, do I remember you saying he fought Schmeling? I think he fought uh, Mike Schmeling back. Uh, well, know. that's who I was thinking of the BJ Lewis was Schmeling. What the fuck was it? Yeah. Ah, it'd be brewing about the time of the when the Nazis came to power, possibly. Yeah. But, um, oh, the whole Vaudevillian scene was. was There's two Germans and all that, that wasn't it, in the twenties. I don't know. Well, the 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 Frankie Campbell incident. Um, I I, I think I'm right in saying he well he killed Campbell basically, didn't he? Didn't he hit him hard? And he said that he couldn't feel his head or something. And I'm no expert on Max Bear to be honest, but there was a, there was definitely a ring death involved. I think what Beat Bot Boop's referring to here. Is that it's sort of took the steam out of Bear's career after that? You become gun shy or something? You know, that's, that's I'm no that, expert. That's not I entirely it. unique. Emil Griffith didn't have very many knockouts after he killed the guy. Mancini didn't have very many knockouts after he killed Kim. It's kind of a running theme. Chris Eubank, Lucy yeah. after the Watson incident. Sergey Kovalev um, couldn't give a fuck. He just kept going. Matias. Who was who was, who was the Mexican kid that killed someone? Um, Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Oh. I think it was a lightweight or a featherweight. Oh, um, is that... Um... Mexican-American. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I literally watched one of his fights, so I think the fair lay on his career. It wasn't he Leha? Oh. But anyway, I just pulled up uh, Max Berry. Yeah, he wasn't the actor in that. He was in the film called The Prize Fighter and the Lady in 1933. There you go. I don't know. With, I, I, I think to be Jack fair, Dempsey these kind of questions are hard. Either. It's hard. These kind of questions, like, to sort of get stuck into. Now you'd have to like put it into a punches on the past or something. I'd say is the fairest thing, you know. Jesus, Jesus, something. Jesus. <laughs> you you mentioned that uh, Chavez. That... Who's, who's Chavez? He oh, the against Le, uh, Le, Levander Johnson. That's the one. That's yeah. the one. That was 2000. Was it 2003? I've seen that, that fight the other week. Actually, that's no, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. But in terms of like say Max Bear, mate, it's something I probably need to go look at in more detail. I'm going off memory here, but I've read up a fair bit on Joe Lewis, but me and Steve done punches for the past for the Max Mel and stuff. I seem to recall Bear being a bit of a party boy on the circuit, doing the act and stuff, um, becoming champion at the time when the racial stuff was at its peak, you know, like white world heavyweight champion type status, I believe. And obviously with the thing with Schmeling coming up and that was when the Nazis were coming to power, I'm sure. So whatever was in the press at the time and that as well, you know, so it would have been different times back then. But yeah, it was, uh, I didn't know much about his career off the top of my head, but I'm sure for a, pe- a brief period, I'm sure he was heavyweight champ. Yeah, well, I'll hang on to that one uh, when Rob co- if Rob comes in here because he... Uh tends to have a little bit of this in there. Wish we could have helped you more. Yeah, there so, he is. Yeah, he beat, he, there you go. He beat Primo Carnera for the title. That's, uh, there, I was right. Aye, so he, he beat uh-huh. him. So he was heavyweight champion in 1934. And he lost it uh, the following year to James J. Braddock. So Braddock 1934, was... he won the title, did you say? Yep. Well, he, the guy he, he killed was in 1930. So that was four years before. So it must not affected him that much if he went on to be the heavyweight champion mm-hmm. of the world. Ah, there it's your Frankie Campbell. Wasn't right there buddy, a buddy bear? Or, uh, am I remember? Wasn't wasn't 
body by our boxer. There we go. Irwin, the referee, ruled that Bear had slipped and had not been dropped. He motioned Bear to, to his feet. In the meantime, Campbell had walked to the far side of the ring, turning his back. Bear rushed across the ring and socked Campbell with three stiff rights to the head. The blows dazed Campbell and he was pretty well spent as he made his way back to the corner. Something feels as though it's broke, broken my head, Campbell told Chief Sec ah, Tommy yeah. Maloney yeah. during the rest interval between the second and third rounds. Onlookers claimed that Bayer slugged Campbell unmercifully in the fifth round after he was already unconscious but held up to his feet by the ropes, which we'll probably get to Steve in the, in the Canadian card that we watched on Thursday night. Yeah. Fucking damn tremendous knockout. Brain specialist Tilton E. Tillman declared they declared death had been caused by a succession of blows on the jaw and not by any struck on the rear of the head and that Campbell's brain had been knocked completely loose from his skull. Oh my God! That's right, yeah. I think I heard it in like boxing <sighs> in the mob or something like that. I knew it was familiar. That's right. He said that he couldn't feel his head or something, which I suppose you wouldn't if your brain was that's, disconnected. That's new information to me, actually. That's, uh, I hadn't read a, a lot about BRA, so it was that year I would be like Joe Lewis and Max Schmell and I'd be reading about and no, no Max Bear and that. To be fair, I never knew about that. To be fair, so yeah. Jesus Christ, never. But find you're glad out you heard about it now. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. That's a that's that's a fucking uh, fantastic moving on. Injury. What about Nick Ball? Now, yeah, I was just gonna go to that one. Um, and uh, much to Andy's disappointment, oh. uh, fail of two fights. Nick Ball scoring two knockdowns in the uh, last half of the fight after Ray Vargas had uh, comprehensively outboxed him for the first six on the fight, ending in a split draw. One card each direction, one even. Um, <clears throat> the first knockdown. A little bit controversial because Ball was holding him, spun him, and then landed a punch. Um, I guess that could have been called either way. The other one was clean. I believe that was in the 10th or the 11th. Um, definitely a tale of two fights. Uh, very interesting. Draw, I, th I thought, was kind of fair because all you needed was for Ray Vargas to have picked up one of the last six rounds, which I don't think was ridiculous. I think there was two that he might have had an argument for. But, Andy, your heart was broken. You almost saw yeah. Ray Vargas lose twice. Yeah, tomorrow. almost, mate. Almost. They, were, they apparently had a kind of tough weight cut as well, actually, potentially. He hasn't made the weight for almost two, uh, two and a bit years, I'm sure. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, obviously, he was getting ball with the problems with the, with the long reach. I, 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 didn't, I really didn't think it was going to be that big a difference. But, mother, oh, my God. Fair play to ball. I mean, he, he remained patient. Okay, he was uh, to a point, I would say, because he was he was desperate. He was getting a wee bit frustrated. He couldn't get any punching distance. You could see when he was really kind of really reaching in for the shots, and Vargas was spinning off to the right, and then you've got he, he's run up up against the ropes trying to bull rush him a little bit. But as you see, just gradually as the fight wore on, he started to kind of measure him and get his timing down, and then start landing the shots and. Really, the type of fight actually you would want to see go 15, 20, 25 rounds just to get, just to get a clear winner actually because you did, I didn't want to go through another twelve rounds it to be fair because it was something similar. But I think ball can't really do much different really, can he? Really, unless he comes out there and he, he manages to land the early doors and really hurt him up and really then you know press for the stoppage then. But you could foresee a rematch kind of going somewhere and that you know it's going to be like first did you say four, four, five, six rounds are going to be really hard for ball to really try and get his timing in. Uh, Vargas just keeps keeps jabbing, moving, and then obviously if he grapple if he can, and spin off to the side if, if balls trying to kind of then like you know burst into distance. Um, but when he was getting in, in the distance, that he was making his punches count, head and body. Um, I, I thought he could maybe work the body a bit more than that as well, but done all he could to be fair. You know, considering what he was fighting up against that in terms of height and reach, you know, it's, it's, it's a tremendous effort. You know, he'd even have the guy doing that as well twice to stop and leave win the bloody fight. It's incredible. So, uh, fair play to Nick Ball. Uh, I had hoped he was going to pull. I think everybody was pulling for him, actually, to be fair, to pull it off because we've had enough of Ray Vargas. But, c'est la vie, we've got to go through another 12 rounds yet, possibly, and uh, we'll be on Nick, the Nick Ball train, you know, cheering him through, hopefully, to pull it off because, uh, as I said, I, I thought I thought he might have just shaded it, especially with the two knockdowns, especially in the kind of second half of the fight and that as well, you know, so... I think the Figueroa fight's going to happen next. I don't think you're going to get that dream, but I think Figueroa will beat him good. Omar Figueroa. Which Brandon. one is the one? Brandon. Oh, Brandon. Yeah. Yeah. Was that, is that, was that the mandated defense in for Vargas? Yeah, he's the interim. He's the interim. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Well, I don't know how this shit uh, fucking works at well, all. They'll, they'll probably need, they'll need, they'll need, they'll need to order a rematch, surely. You know, if Nick Ball was the manager and they fought to a draw, that's got to go to a rematch. 
Surely, at least. Maybe. Except Figaro's the interim. I don't know. Well, it must have... <laughs> he's, he's no... I've, I must say, I had the WBC rankings up there, but he's no listed in boxing scene as, as WBC interim champion anymore. I don't know that they do list them. He must say. I thought they would maybe force him to fight Figaro next as well, but Frig knows. That was featherweight, eh? Figueroa. I, I just think the fact that Figaro's come at him from a much more similar height and a better reach with the a, a same kind of swarming aggressive style. Um, yeah. He'll, he'll be able to to kind of do what Ball did, but big man do it. Just so you know, Super Bantamweight directly translated from Spanish to English. <laughs> he likes the Super Cock. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because of the Bantam and the Cock in it, man. The class. <laughs> but uh, aye, you're right. He's listed on the WBC website as a uh, interim champion. There you Just go. See. Just need to wait and see. But no, I think we need to order a rematch here, surely, Christ. No, it was, it, it was a, a really uh, a good fight. I actually enjoy it. Usually, you know, Ray Vargas fights aren't that good, but that one went right down to the wire. Steve, I think you really got to give some credit to Nick Ball for being in fantastic shape. I mean, he was getting ripped with body shots. Uh, Vargas did a great work to the body early, and it did not deter Ball down the, the stretch. It uh, did not take uh, out of his gas tank. He was still, uh, you know, going uh, strong in the 12th round. The, the guy is in fantastic shape. Yeah, he took some hell of a, a body shot. So I was talking to Dominic about this fight. He, he asked me how I'd scored it. I don't bother scoring fights, but Ball felt like the winner to me. It might have been the f- f- fact that he came on, you know, in the second half of the fight and got the couple of knockdowns and all, but the momentum was definitely shifting in his favour. And Vargas, when he doesn't like something, fair enough, he just drops to the floor. <laughs> and then in the end, I think the referee just started to get fed up. And I picked Vargas to win in the Prediction League. A shout out to Joe Kennedy. I just thought his experience might tell. He seems to be one of these guys who's always managed to scrape through all the time, even with those boring fights. And I'd love to see the back of him, but uh, you know he's going to be around to stay. Also, I felt that whenever Ball fought the South African in that ill-fated fight, Lamarty, I was at that fight, actually. I thought Lamarty had a lot of success early on with the jab, with the movement. And I thought, well, a better version of him, which is Vargas, would be able to give Ball trouble. And he just didn't have the punching power. I think he had the power. Uh, with those body shots and getting the ripping the uppercuts, I think he might have stunned Ball, but Ball, I don't know, people in the chat saying he's Commonwealth level, British level, I thought that myself. He seems to be the type of guy who you could figure out, but uh, who's going to be able to figure him out? Nobody at the moment. You know, he punches hard, comes forward, just gets hold of you, and he's just really hard to repress and resist, and it's going to take someone with a good sharp jab, bit of foot movement, and a good punch, I think, to beat him, and Vargas isn't that man. Warren was absolutely seething at the end of the fight. Warren's always raging, isn't he, these days? You know, what do the crowd think about this fight? And they're all, and all this shit, man. But mandated if the WBC feel they want to see it again. But one thing I am a fan of, Matty, is the Vargas at the end with that religious staff that he brought in to lean on when he was doing his interview. I think boxing needs a bit more of that. I, 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 I didn't see that one come in. He sort of brought in this kind of like staff with a crucifix on and he was standing there holding himself up. So fair play to Vargas. Yeah, I didn't know what the hell is going on. I, I thought maybe he was uh, going to be part of the major scene at the uh, church's uh, Christmas uh, <laughs> ceremony. thought someone was going to start like waving incense about the place or something, but uh, no, it, it, it didn't come to pass. Yeah, it, w- w- was I supposed to have the frankincense or the myrrh? <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyhow, um, but yeah, that was uh, an interesting little fight on that card. Uh, absolutely enjoyable. I didn't see everything. But uh, I did get a chance to watch the last half of Justice Hooney against Kevin Lorena. Hooney barely able to hang on through that 10th round. Lorena just wasn't able to find a shot after staggering Hooney pretty hard. Uh, it, the last half uh, from where I was was definitely dominated by Hooney. Apparently the first half was more competitive. Um, Andy, what did you think of this heavyweight scrap? Uh, it was during dinner time and, uh, and the bedtime run. But to be honest, I did catch some of it. Uh, especially the early half of the fight, Lorena certainly was putting the, that work on him. The early half of the fight, and Huni is really then having to kind of like turn the tide a wee bit. It was a it was a hard fought scrap for what was seen here. And to be fair, I wasn't really impressed with Justice Huni. To, uh, to be honest with, you. I know he's had problems with. I think it's he it broke his hand before the last Olympics. I think so. I don't know if it's that's maybe a problem. Um, but Lorena, as as, as as I've said before, the cruiserweight coming up. And I was his mom died four or five days ago. Yeah, fair play on me. Oh, he's 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 dug in there. Um, 
it was a close fight. Um, Hooney probably done enough maybe to kind of you know stretch it out possibly, but definitely a work in progress. Day, in all honesty, but Lorraine, yeah, um, I was actually surprised to see him up at heavyweight actually because he was just. Um, I'm sure he was doing it cruiserweight for for a while, but then um, he's came up there like two years ago, and I actually forgot he actually was even up at heavyweight. Then I realised, remember Dubois had him Dubois, down. He hurt, exactly right. hurt Dubois, didn't I he? I hurt done his knee, and I think in that fight as well. That's right. But um, he certainly is is the kind of wee side for a heavyweight to be honest. But he, he, he done as done as well as he could to be honest. Because again, I wasn't tuning in fully, but he, he he done his done his best as he could in that. But Huni certainly has a work in progress as well. Yeah, and he could be in a few decent fights down the road. I don't think he's uh, going to be a champion, though. But, Steve, I, I, I think that he brings something to the table. And in uh, this uh, world of many uh, people looking to prove their worth at heavyweight, uh, he, he could be an interesting scrap with one of these young guns that's also undefeated. Yeah, I think so. I think he's decent. He's functional. At some point, they're going to have to just start putting these guys together. I know that's not an original thought in the sport, but there's so many sort of new fighters hanging around, and Hooney hasn't really moved into that direction yet. This was a nice step-up fight for him after his, what, eighth or ninth fight. Lorena's no mug. I seem to remember Lorena a few years ago. Didn't he have a PED scandal where he said that he'd taken... He got contaminated his by wife's, his wife's uh, like, fertility drugs or something fertility like that. tablets <laughs> or something. So I do think he boost the system for taking steroids. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So and he's a former IBO champ as well. But yeah, he's a he's a decent solid guy. Bit too small for heavyweight. And Hooney did what he had to do, apart from the last minute or so when he sort of got caught. But yeah, it's hard to get excited about these guys until they start really fighting against each other. Basically, you know, if they, if Hooney got put in against Jared Anderson or something, I'd say. Yeah, I'd be in favour of that fight. So until that point, <laughs> Jared really Anderson's know. not going to be getting well, in. With well, yeah, fans. exactly. Maybe on the streets, a Jared Anderson type figure, maybe. I, Matty. <laughs> yeah, at this level, rate, Jared Anderson's best is going to be the legal process. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh dear me! Uh, he'll be sharing many things. They will just be in a cell. Um, anyhow, um, further on down the car, let's see here. So, let's see here. Yeah, now, Steve, imagine if you will for a second that you are a young undefeated fighter with good knockout power trying to just find the right opportunity to get yourself towards a title shot and you get a phone call and it's from none other than his excellency who tells mm -hmm. you you're one of his favorite fighters and then you show up and you do the job how would you feel steve how would you <laughs> feel if you were mark chamberlain and he's not even there <laughs> to see it. If Mark Chamberlain wins by knockout and his excellency isn't in the building to watch the fight, did Mark Chamberlain win at all? He, he looked good, Matty. I've seen him before on Friday nights on BT. Puts his shots together well. Gavin Gwynn's had a bit of a, a career renaissance, um, but unfortunately, as she showed in that Marcelli fight last time that he's uh, going to struggle against a certain style and Chamberlain was kind of made for him stylistically, so... He's yeah, excellent. Maybe they go to the toilet or something like that. <laughs> I know, he, maybe. He, 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 he caught it short sometimes, you know. Uh, and as I understand, in, in, in Arabia, you didn't get the proper toilets, so you've got to kind of aim for a hole in the hole in the flare, you know. So it takes a bit of time. All right. Well, that was random. Uh, but yeah, good performance by Chamberlain there. Were you um, impressed by him, Matty? What did you think of Chamberlain? I only really went and back and, and just looked for the stoppage, and uh, he, he does seem like a, a tough a tough kid. They're talking about uh, maybe him against Cordina, so I don't know. Interesting, mm -hmm. uh, interesting to see him on the come up here. Uh, Tom uh, Smith, Turkey was too busy with the chamber maid. <laughs> <laughs> maids, Andy, maids. Oh, but he's only got the maid there, so he's I'm, I'm using. You know, singular mate. So Turkey saying that Chamberlain is his favourite fighter was a bit like Canelo saying that um, Terry, yeah, Terry Harper, Harper was he. His, that's what I thought you were going with, Matt. There, Matty. <laughs> that was Eddie here. Or, or um, Helen Mirren sliding into the Joshua Franco. What was the debate? What was it? Was Franco, yeah, it was Franco um, against Maloney, Maloney wasn't it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> big Maloney fan. <laughs> <laughs> we got to ask her if she has a real boxing fan. Fuck. She needs to ask some answer some serious questions, Andy. I think. Yep. Let's see. Oh, Our, we're see it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, in a preview of right hands to come, Lewis Green stopping previously undefeated Jack McGann with a nice overhand right. Uh, quick first round win there for uh, Green. Uh, I guess uh, back to the drawing board for McGann there, Mister Patterson. 
Oh, I without doubt, mate. It was a it was a shocking knockout. To be fair, um, massive massive shot. I'd never recovered from it. To be fair, um, the other one, which I was a concern, but it was like I don't know, 40, 50 seconds into the first round. If, if it was that, um, and same goes for uh, the other one, uh, Madrimov against Kubanov. Um, talk about a mismatch, man. Kubanov really never really t- done nothing, really, didn't he? And Madrimov just basically like looked like the best he's ever looked. To be fair, so it's probably a combination between like it's a certain level above the other fighter. So I wouldn't go too mad into that one either. To be fair, but it's, it was a, it was a decent performance. I will say. But just to reiterate, my that was a nine-hour slog, man. Some of those, you know, some of that, and my mind's a bit hazy now because it is forty-eight hours ago, and it's nine and a half fucking hours. So come y- on. you mentioned Madrimov against Kurbanov. Uh, I was going to book him, but let's go into that one. Cause the rest I did not see for the life of me. Uh, Madrimov, uh, it just looked excellent. Uh, his punch selection was, was fantastic. Andy, um, I, I thought in the round before the stoppage that Kurbanov was finally getting some success, kind of varying his right hand, actually. I thought he caught uh, Madrimov with it straight, caught it with a little bit loopy, and also landed the uppercut. Thought maybe the tides were turning, but then in the, uh, in the fifth round, Madrimov just turned it on, uh, heard him up against the ropes. Referee stopped in. I thought it looked a little bit early. Kurbanov didn't complain. Uh, but uh, that that was a, a heck of a good uh, that was a good win for Madrimov right there. He, he looked sharp. Yeah, he did that. Actually, as I say, it was probably his best performance as a pro. Um, seen MB's comment there about the fight post being off previously. I, I've tried to remember that actually. Maybe I was injured. As I say, if it was injury, then then maybe that does explain. But I'm not saying it was a lack of known effort, but it's it's certainly like he was never felt like he was in the fight to me. Madrimov just looked like he was a level above him in every department: movement, speed. Even you know he's not even a noted banger, but Christ, even some of the shots he was throwing and landing that was causing problems to Kurbanov. And to be fair, Kabanov, you know, he shouldn't really have. I'm sure he was undefeated until that fight, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah he's pretty yeah. sturdy in yeah. the past. He is pretty sturdy, have come in Russia, haven't they? Yeah, and you know, he should have a. Well, I maintain that Liam Smith could have done a wee bit more in that fight, and he could, he could definitely have won it. Same goes for the Sorrow fight as well. Was he Sorrow won that fight for me? Liam Smith, if he just upped it a little bit more, he could have definitely won that fight. In fact, I thought do think Smith won that fight. So there's potentially two losses he should have on his record before he met, met Marjimov. So he finally got he finally got served. But as you say, Steve, he's never fought outside Russia before um, as well. Um, Texera, Soros, as I say, it was, it, was a, it was a gifted decision. And Diego Chavez, who at that point as well, slightly washed at that point, but he'd... Um, Karbanov had like points deducted in that fight, I'm sure. So European level fighter, mate, Matty Karbanov. But Madrimov, as I say, he was a level above. Um, but again, with him, you know, light middleweight is a, it's, 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 it's still an exciting. You got you got Zoo now. But obviously, with, with the belts fragmenting, you got Zoo coming in there. You've now got Madrimov kind of like kicking up now. He's got his his title, so it's starting to stack up a little bit that division again after it getting cleaned out supposedly. Do Mendoza still kicking about there? Possibly. You got my. Um, did Murtazaliev, did he get knocked out? Or was it somebody else I'm thinking about? One of the Uzbeks? No, I don't think he did. Isn't, uh, what do you call the big lanky fella for Fundora? Fundora. He's no, fighting he's, uh, soon, isn't he? He's fighting Bahuchek. And you got uh, Abbas um, Barrow. He he won the European title there, t- was it last week or two weeks ago? I can say Ginton, yeah. So he, he'll be in the running now for a title fight at some point. And you see you've got two vacant belts at, at fifth, well, you got one vacant belt now at 54. Um, uh, with IBF, so and then Charlo is still maybe gonna fight again. I don't know. We'll see. God knows, mate. Well, they stripped him of the WBA, didn't they? Isn't that what Madrimov and Kabanov were for? Yeah, he's a champion in recess or some shit. Like oh, is that, that what it is? WBC. Yeah. Yeah. I think the difference, what Andy said as well, was just speed and explosivity. Madrimov just seemed a lot quicker to the punch. He was throwing the shots a lot quicker and a lot sharper. But that said, <coughs> I know Kabanov. Has had his gifts in the past. I thought he actually won the Smith fight, although it was very close. Sorrow, I thought, yeah, possibly Sorrow won that one. But Kabanov, I would actually go with MB. I'm no Kabanov fan. I don't give a shit like, but I wonder if he was injured. He doesn't didn't look himself. Why would you get to that stage? Excuse me. <coughs> Why would you get to that stage and then just put in a performance like that, man? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's who knows. There were weird rumors before the fight. God only knows. So, I uh, but that was uh, you know that was possible. What we were thinking might have been the most competitive fight on the card. Um, 
I, uh, I I think at the end of the day, Vargas against Ball um, was the uh, the best matched fight, even though if at times wasn't the most entertaining. I know how much Andy hates Ray Vargas, uh, but uh, Ray Vargas lives to fight another day. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what else was on there? Uh, I had uh, Andre uh, Nowitzki uh, taking out Juan Torres in the third. Uh, Zayad Almayuf to uh, winning a points decision over Christian Lopez Flores and Roman Fury uh, taking a points win over uh, Martin Spark. Uh, anybody see those or have any interest in discussing them before we move on? The van that's carved yeah, over yeah. an hour now, man. Let's fucking move on. Uh, we're going to be catching the card up for time soon. Fucking great. Exactly, aye. Ten All hours right. we'll be discussing this card just a bit, man. In total. All right. We're going to go back to Thursday in Canada. Yes. We uh, had a uh, card that had its uh, its uh, entertaining moments <laughs> on there. Trying to think of what I saw on there. Maybe I didn't see as much as I thought that I did. Let's see here. Oslis Iglesias taking out Mar- uh, Marcelo Caceres. In a single round, uh, just to catch him on the temple with some whipping shots and uh, had uh, Caceres all shades of messed up. Uh, but then in what was the 50-50 fight, basically with the books, Stephen Butler sneaking a right hand right through the guard as Steve Rolls uh, putting him against the ropes and then just waylaying hooks into him. Uh, the referee stepping in, Rolls uh, generally unaware that anything had happened after he had kind of regained sense of uh, where he was a little bit. Uh, that, uh, there was a few other fights on there. Female heavyweight fight that I actually didn't watch. Uh, Mehmet Unal <laughs> was on there. He is a still a developing prospect as well. Uh, Andy, uh, what were your thoughts on this card? Uh, well, firstly, I, I'm actually quite, uh, enthused with the Canadians at this point, actually, because, um, they've signed the uh, top, well, chief support, the, the Cuban. So they seem to be making moves and there, there was talk uh, during the show and that, that they've got a big announcement coming up and, and very soon, I'll just leave it at that. They didn't mention anything really, but names were trying to kind of like get mentioned by Corey Erdman. They were mentioning, you know, Christian and Billy. So maybe a, a big, big event coming in the in the off for you know for the Canadians. And I, I really do like some of the fighters. That I mean, obviously you got that, that Bear Slanoff. That he's he's a really good fighter. I really like that Lewis Santana as well. Actually, um, I did think that was a low blow. I think that. Um, it was Garcia, I think the opponent's name was. Oh yeah, at the that. end of the first round. And, yeah, uh, that was a, yeah, that was yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a body shot. I know it hit the I know it hit the um, the the waistband of the sh- uh, the shot, but it didn't look low to me. And I thought he was milking a little bit. He got he took the full five minutes. It was like uh, you see Dubois a bit, Andy. I thought wasn't bit. it the way, the the low blow? A wee bit. Um, we also see. I really like the look of that uh, the Colombian kid. He's twenty year old actually. Is it Juan Orobio? I think his name is. I think he's just turned twenty anyway. I don't know what. I'm not going to proclaim anything with this kid now, but he does look a very, very good prospect. I don't know if he's going to be remaining at 35. Obviously, by the time he gets to about 15, 20 fights, I imagine he's going to have to move up and wait, especially as he gets older, but want to look out for that Wilkins Mateo as well. Another one, actually, interesting, interesting prospect. Um, big, tall dude, 19-year-old, and that, got a bit of power about him. Uh, another one, been interesting to see when he develops. Clearly won't he stay at 68 for much longer, actually, either as well. Um, and uh, was we well, just mentioned Iglesias. I remember mentioning Steve. How how far back we mentioned Steve about two two years ago, possibly with this yeah, guy. A good while ago, yeah. I mentioned this guy when he turned probably when he turned I mean, either pro or his second pro fight. I noticed him one of the obscure German cards, and I bring I bring I like everything about this guy. By the way, he's got good feet. He's got quick. I mean, quick hands. I, I take. My, you, you no doubt watched that fight, but I, I actually missed the punch. It was that quick. Actually, I thought he actually threw a body shot and it landed. When you look at on the on, on the actual replay, he actually faints with a jab to the body. The opponent bites on the on the on the on the faint. He then throws a straight left hand that hits him square in the forehead, and then misses with the right hook. It was a one shot basically that basically just totally just transformed that guy immediately. I actually thought it was a body shot on the right hook that landed that was that fast, as, as I said to Steve. The, the hand speed is, is, is frightening. The, the power is, is, going to, is going to come as well as he as as probably gets, you know, even more training, uh, sitting down on his shots. And one thing I have to laugh at as well is when they were doing the, uh, the pre-fight thing, when the, the list it was five feet eight, I'm saying, so that, that's fucking all right. He's closer to six feet eight than he is five feet eight, actually, because when, he, when the fight was started, you can literally see he's well over six feet tall. 
a bit lanky actually, but obviously once he fills out, who knows? But he's he's definitely looking a proper prospect. And uh, I'll just mention the 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 main event, devastating hook out by the way. I mean, that Steve Rose hadn't a clue what happened to him. He's he's sat in the corner, he's having to have his corner explained to him. And he's a scary guy. He's, he's yeah, you know, he's... he lasted longer than that with with Golovkin. That was that was that was a one that was that was another one shot as well. I think the, the was it three left took kind of follow up shots. I don't know if they fully landed, but it was certainly kind of close to the point. The referee was a wee bit slow there, but it was a devastating uh, right hand. It just sank him right in the ropes, and he was sleeping because you see, he woke up, hadn't a clue what happened to him. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a decent card, and I'm really liking what the Canadians are doing. They've, they've signed the Cuban, as, as I mentioned. He hasn't ranked at this point. I'd imagine he'll, he'll drop into top 15, I'd imagine, in, in the next coming months. But definitely a serious prospect, and as you said, nobody does it to Corsairs, you know, or nobody has done it to him actually. One shot, you know, dropped, counted it, <sighs> devastating. Yeah, definitely a little bit of uh, some surprise endings on that card, Steve. Uh, the, the Canadians continue to deliver to deliver in the middle of the week. Oh yes, absolutely. I'm loving these Canadian cards. Um, not too much to add that Andy hasn't already gone over. I'll just give my two pence worth quickly. Yeah, Butler. He's shown his levels in the past. Got absolutely annihilated by um, Alim Hanalulu. He's he's teamed up with John Scully now, though. A couple of wins. This one was a belter. Rolls. No idea where he was. Sitting on the ropes. Out. Um, when he come round, he was sort of protesting the stoppage, but no protesting needed. Iglesias beat David Morel as an amateur. Had mixed results, but that sort of Cuban domestic scene is really tough. But he looks the business. Six foot two. Very very fast uh, hands to head and body. Reminds me of Johan Pablo Hernandez. If anybody remembers him, a Cuban based in Germany a few years ago, good fighter, a little bit chinny, but could punch and yeah, some good fights. Yep. Steve Cunningham, yeah. Steve Cunningham, Steve Cunningham, Cunningham, yeah. Cunningham yeah. yeah, reminds me a bit of him stylistically. That was my first instinct. And Coseras, he doesn't win uh, the fights at the top level, but he has been the distance. I think Belanga, he dropped him as well, went a few rounds with Billy Joe Saunders. He's usually durable, and Iglesias just absolutely wiped him out. So. Uh, that was that. You mentioned the heavyweights as well, the women. Vanessa against uh, Abril. Uh, the heavyweight women fight at 175 pounds, so that's light heavyweight sort of for the fellas. And Abril came in at 170, and there were a couple of fat women really just swinging away at each other. But it was it was fun for for the duration. Uh, Mehmet Unal, he was an Olympian, I think for Turkey. He's been vo- uh, lauded as a bit of a puncher, but. I think as the levels go up, he will turn into a bit more of a boxer. I don't think he's got that power. Now that he's fighting against guys who are going to stand up to him, like this Galavar did. Uh, he's dead already. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think I've move on with him as well. Eh? Yeah, he's he's older, so they're going to have to... Although they do tend to get them out quite quickly, which I like. Arobio, Colombian, can't speak a mm. word of English or French. He's fighting in Canada, left his comfort zone in Colombia. He's only 20, real puncher. Looks like he could have a bit about him. Wilkins Mathieu as well. Um, he's had eight fights now. I've seen all of them on the Eye of the Tiger promotions. And Bia Slanov, as Andy mentioned, um, 14 and 0, 12 knockouts. They're really going the uh, Arta Baturbia route here. His name's Movladin Bia Slanov, but they're calling him Arta Bia Slanov, the Chechen wolf. And he's Who a Russian who's calling... pretending he's Canadian. Who was the one that were called Mini GGG? Was, that was, was Katayev, wasn't it? I think. Was it Katayev? No, yeah. was it on this card? So someone will get mentioned. Oh right. Oh, I'm not sure. I didn't. I don't think I heard that. To be honest. Oh sorry. I, I must be something. It no, was, it was, it was I, on I, the I, zone no. card, wasn't it? Right. Was it the zone? No, I tell you what. It was. I was. It was. It was. was uh, yeah. That was mate. Who was it? Eddie it was, was calling fucking homeboy. No, the it was man. Costello. Mixed. It was Costello. Was talking about it. Oh, was him? Right, Eddie said it as well. <laughs> he, was talking about the Soviet, he was talking about the old Soviet Union and that. You see, like, so how these guys, when they've turned pro back in the day, so having all that richer talent coming through the pro scene, like the, the Uzbeks, uh, the Kazakhs, obviously the Russians and the Ukrainians and that, but they would never turn pro back in the day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good card. I, I enjoy these cards. I enjoyed they, it. I they've enjoyed got, it. Um, oh, who's Bazinians fighting some local guy, I think, coming up. They were pushing that for the beginning of April. They're active. They're on ESPN. And just in case I don't mention it as well, Matty, over the weekend, there was a win for Kevin Lele Sajo over in France, 22-0, and 20 knockouts. Uh, the, phenomen- the phenomenon, they call him, he's 33. He stopped uh, Giovanni Di Carolis. He's been around for absolute donkeys, right. this guy. Sajo's style and is quite like Christian and Billy. Come forward, hands high, physically strong, beats you into submission, decent boxer, might outbox him, but... 
<clears throat> at that European level, fringe world level, he's looking like a, a bit of a handful, to be honest. Just to, I just to own that Steve actually own that card. The that Najib Mohammed, I'm sure got iced in four rounds. Yeah, the that's Europe eleven game. losses for him now, and he he, get, he uh, tends to get knocked out pretty handy, doesn't he? he should maybe uh, pack it in, I think. So that card, Steve, is on the usual uh, usual channels. If you're interested, yes. us. yep, I got the main event. Just I'm grabbing that. Right. Thanks, Matty. All right, <clears throat> enjoy and joining us also, Rob Kelly. Rob, why don't you give us your weekend wrap up and we will uh, move on. Um, hi, Maddie. I hope you are well and having a lovely time this evening hosting. And I hope you had a lovely time in Puerto Rico. <laughs> I, I, think you, I think you've seen the comments that have said, why is Rob always picking on Maddie? <laughs> and he doesn't like it to drawn out laugh anymore either. Fucking <laughs> 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 dickhead. <laughs> Can't even bully anyone in peace these days. Fucking hell. <laughs> um, yeah, good, good fucking what's the the zone card? Um, really impressed with Joe Parker. I kind of thought that he couldn't imply that style, the same kind of style that he used against Wilder against Zhang. But despite overcoming knockdowns and like heavy shots, fuck, one of them was on the back of the head, I think. But um, definitely got into a rhythm and started to take the play away from Zhang and box clever and fucking has a bit of seasoning on him, a bit of fucking few moves that he wasn't doing before. He's fighting kind of more out of a crouch up close, throwing that right overhand right in on top of Zhang and just winning the rounds like a fucking, it was a close fight or whatever, but I think he was a deserved winner. Like, and um, I wasn't expecting that. I thought Zhang would get to him and stop him just by lying on him and stuff, but thought his fucking, his footwork is kind of, uh, understated in the last two fights the way he's able to get in and out of distance so they've definitely made improvements with him um, I think they have a rematch clause they have to do it again I wouldn't fancy fucking another rematch with Zang give him a chance to adjust but maybe another camp with fucking Andy and, and Parker is going to bring out more of this from him Like, but it's just a pity these fights have to I mean they're just paydays now aren't they for these guys in the heavyweights because the path is laid out towards the title so they just have to wait it out like for uh, maybe an IBF to become vacant or something like that but yeah Joe Packer thought it showed huge balls as well getting up off the deck and um, put in a good performance in, in terms of the main event like um, I thought maybe like this would go the distance or um, maybe Nganu might even have a moment of success or AJ might get tired but realistically he did what he's supposed to do then he went out and punched holes in him like um, nothing over complicated straight shots held his feet I tell you what I was I know Nganu didn't have Tyson in the camp for this fight i'm not saying that would have made a difference but i saw him doing pads <laughs> in the dressing room before that and he wasn't even turning his hands over on the shots now obviously he's just warming up but i was like what the fuck are they doing with this guy like what's the, what's his and then i started thinking like what is his what's in Gano's plan going to be like because he doesn't fucking box off the jab so it's going to be just power isn't it trying to get close to him so he did kind of club him around the back of the head and you could see he felt it but the difference in levels was just fucking apparent like and that's what fiori should have done with him that's what aj did to him what it does for the shake up of the heavyweights, I don't know. Usyk and Fury are still one and two for me. Like, um, Joe Parker is a good shout for number three, as is Joshua. Um, maybe them two will fight again, but they won't though because Zang is fighting. But I think the optics are different though, in, in terms of AJ. Like, it's a fucking massive global viral moment. He's made him fall on his own leg, he's fucking flatlining. He didn't move for 10 seconds. It's making it look like boxer size Ben and him have the master plan to defeat Fury. So that that in terms of that fight was about to be dead in the water. And at the time I was thinking, why the fuck are they making this fight? It's too high risk, low reward, but it's perfect for the optics. He's gone and fucking demolished someone in two rounds. He's flattened him. He should have been target practice for Joshua anyway. And they, they've taken advantage of a big name, never been dropped in the UFC. So they can really fucking market this shit again. It just depends on who they can keep him active with. Um but maybe all is not lost in terms of seeing Fury and AJ in the ring together. Like, the, the, and that's massively dependent on Fury holding up at his end of the bargain too. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But for the optics, I think brilliant for Joshua. It puts him back in the mix. It makes it exciting again. And he's rescued his career or rescued his chance as a, as a, at a massive, massive payday that is still um, demand the public interest. So, I mean, that's all you could say about it. It's still a showpiece fight. I still don't feel good about this guy in Ganu holding up the heavyweight division, having fights against two of the top three guys, you know, that way, like, it's just fucking still, it still doesn't sit right with me, but it is what it is, we're living in that fucking world of cross promotion and new revenue streams and all that, like, so, yeah, um, that's about as much as I caught, though. Yep, it's about as dumb as Conor McGregor against Floyd Mayweather, but what just, are you going to do? Just briefly, guys, I put in the chat there, just a quick question, did, 
did Parker get his nose broken in that fight? Because there seemed to be a lot of blood looked like he had a, a nick or on the bridge of the nose more. Wasn't oh, was it, it the like bridge of the nose or right. something? Yeah, so it wasn't right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, let's see here. Let's go in the chat. Thanks some people for being around. Our good friend Yimmy Yappy in there moderating. That's not easy. Just greed. Hamed, Tom Smith, Aunt B, and B, uh, Aunt B, MB. Yeah, that was uh, a little tough one there. Uh, Hamed, of course. Oh, we already said him. John Trounson. Uh, Hamed was on with us earlier. Uh, Michael Thompson. Uh, Paul Raftery. Uh, let's see here. Who else we got? Sam O'Hare Childs. Thanks for stopping in there. I don't think I've seen you here before. Go oh, find just a couple more. Of course, we're in there. Wow, there's been a fair amount of conversation, but it's just been between the same people, Steve. Jay Yo. All the losers. Andrew Thicket. There we go. Ray. Just had to go up a little while there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Will Balston. We would like to thank all of you guys for being in there today, as well as P. Yes, just the letter P. Um, thank you, and we all said super chairs. We'll thank you guys again at the end of the show. Um, well, <clears throat> it is a weird time, and you know, uh, Rob mentioned Mike Tyson wasn't uh, is uh, much involved in the camp of Francis and Gano this time around, and one might say, "Well, why was that? Be what? What was going on? What better could Mike Tyson have to do?" Well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Mike Tyson is preparing for a fight with Jake Paul. Yes, fuck off with this shit. Like it's that horrible, was a genuine it? sparring session. That's not going to be a fight, man. Come I on. this is Come a strange on. time to be alive. Nah, I don't even want to see this shit. Honestly, I know. Like Mike, I think we've Mike is kind of like our like me and Andy's. I suppose and Steve's there as well. Maybe it was where Maddie like that. Our era, like of the fucking. He was the alley of our era, not comparing the two of their careers, but he was that big of our era. Like, but in hindsight, since his retirement, the oversaturation of the Tyson world is just fucking too much for me to take. Like, how much more do we have to see a Tyson between his podcast, his fucking weed strain, his fucking comedy one man tour, his documentary, his movie? I have enough Tyson. Like, I don't, I don't want to see Tyson fighting Jake Paul. He's a sixty year old pot smoker. Like, it's not. He can't get in shape. You know what I mean? Like. 20 years ago, Kevin McBride was stopping him. Like, it's not, this is not good. Like, I don't know. And, and unless, like, it's a result, it's a foregone conclusion, which a lot of those things seem to be in the Jake Paul world. I don't know. Like, it doesn't, it's a bit spooky. And who's sanctioning this, by the way? A fucking 60 year old man having a pro fight. Like, stop. Like, Rob seems less than pleased about this whole thing. Steve, what is your, what are your opinions? I don't really have too many opinions, to be honest. It's just a sort of another eye roll to do with boxing, isn't it? I mean, anything to do with Jake Paul. He knows how to sell a fight. He was pushing the Indian fellow. He wants, to, you know, he'd signed some Indian amateur or something, I think, hadn't he? So he was trying to promote that. He was out in Puerto Rico, topping the bill that you were at. And I don't know, I just see him as just a complete circus show and a sideshow. And I just think it's nailed on that he's going to win a world title of some description because they're going to contrive, absolutely contrive, to get him into like a vacant shot against some absolute no mark. But it, it, this is a sort of offbeat turn. I thought he would just carry on knocking out the likes of Ryan Borlands and then they've brought Tyson on board. Is it an exhibition? I think Netflix are involved. I haven't really looked into it too much because it's an absolute shit show, isn't it? And that's just the way boxing seems to be at the moment. He's trading off his popularity, his personality, he's making money. He's not for me. To be honest, I'm not interested in anything he has to do on YouTube. I, I do watch his fights because it's sort of tangentially in boxing. And I've given him credit in the past. He takes the sport seriously, he trains, but he is a circus show at the end of the day. And he's not the only one in boxing. What Tyson will do to him, I have no idea. I don't know the rules of the boat, who's sanctioning it, where it's taking place. And uh, it's all for TV, all for show. I'm against it unless they give me a job in it. Then I'd be fucking Netflix and shill. I'd be Absolutely. fucking all over this. Right Brilliant so, event, Rob, in my opinion. Yeah, no, it's fucking, it's got potential. Oh, no. <laughs> Andy, go ahead, sir. Go uh, ahead. Uh, look, I've said my piece on it, well, briefly. I just don't think that <clears throat> it's going to be a fight. It'll be a sparring session. I, I just, you know, Mike Tyson is permanently stoned these days, right? 
you don't fight when you're stoned. It'll be like a, a mover in session. And as Steve says, like, I, I, I don't, I, I think I've seen Jake Paul fight fully once. And it was against um, Tyson's brother, or whatever his name. What was his name again? Tommy. It's the only time. And if, if Mike wanted to, I don't know about injuries or if he's, if he's got any problems with, with, through his career and that, he's just suffered me just now. He's had neck problems and that as well. I still believe if Mike Tyson wanted to at that age, if he wanted to, would have at least one good or two two good bursts in him that he could fucking lay waste to him by trap him on the ropes or in the corner. And I believe Tyson could unload if he wanted to. But where's the money in that? The, you know what I'm saying? He, well, what does he care? What the fuck does he have to lose? Well, what's, he, I mean, what's he going to knock him out for? What's the point? He, he gets nothing out yet. Yeah, he's, yeah, he does. He fucking like got what? one last fucking knockout before he fucking called it a day. I just... That's, I, and I, I'm with you into the sense, and I told you know Donnie I this, think, I'm like, I think it's an absolutely ridiculous thing, blah, blah, blah. It's probably set up, and, you know, Paul the win, etc. But Mike Tyson, it used to be Mike Tyson was dangerous for four or five rounds. I think he's probably still dangerous for one or two. Yeah, he's dangerous, mate. But I, I just don't think Tyson's going to take it that seriously because he knows. Look, do you remember? Look how seriously wait, 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 took wait, wait, the Roy. Look how seriously took the Roy exhibition, dude. Wait a minute. I did. I can't remember. I don't think I even watched it, mate. I think Rob could maybe film in on that detail. But mem- mem- remember Julius Francis knocking out that little shit house in the street. Remember that. Yeah. No, but go on. Right, okay, right. Well, Steve remembers it, so we'll, we'll get you the link, right? So anyway, Julius Francis got knocked out of Mike Tyson, right? Ex-pro fighter, he iced, he was, he worked, he's working security, he iced someone who was screwing up to him, who was like really just getting, just looking for bother, and he got dropped away with one shot. Mike Tyson commented on that on that very thing. He says, why would you fuck with that guy? You ain't in, in his league, Right. Jake Paul ain't in Mike Tyson's league. If Mike Tyson wants to kick up fuck, man, he could do it. Look at the guy in the airplane. He fucking started, like, fucking about with Mike Tyson, slapping his head or whatever it was, and Tyson decided to fuck this shit. I'm going to get involved. There's not a guy who you who want to piss off. I start, you say, I believe he could he could do it if he wanted to, but I don't think he will because it doesn't make business sense, I don't think. It's my opinion. I just think it does. Go in there and destroying a guy and absolutely like put, like put him in the morgue or put him in the hospital. It's just not going to work, man. How's right. that going to look? I don't like. He's not going to put him in the fucking morgue or the well, hospital. Look at say this, Bill. Look at say the about, uh, about that fight there last night. Uh, sorry, Friday night. Joshua and Ngannou getting badly knocked out. Like now I say that Ngannou is, is, is a combat fighter, but he, he ain't professionally trained fighter as a as, as, as a boxer, right? So he's going to have technical deficiencies. He's also up in age in that as well. He got yeah. badly chinned. If that is someone even maybe even below his level as a fighter, man, he's going. To, he could end up in the fucking hospital. Jake Paul was he's he done marvelous for himself, but he ain't a fighter. Tommy Fury beat him. Mike Tyson could could absolutely annihilate him if he wanted to. That's, 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 that's the, the big out. anomaly, isn't it, with with Paul? That's the big anomaly with Paul. It was the what if factor beforehand. He was on Showtime. He was selling pay per views. He was excited, yeah. and knocking people out, and then he lost to Tommy Fury. That's not get a good this, look. Get now he's on clear. the zone. <laughs> everybody, everybody, get this clear. Everybody's listening. Who's like, oh, it's intriguing. It's this. It's a fuck. If Mike Tyson damages that guy, the whole thing is finished for everybody. Everybody who's you know, who's on the, on the YouTube scene, you're fucked. You're not going to get. You're, it's just not going to get sanctioned. If Mike Tyson comes out and brutally, absolutely annihilates that guy, and something seriously harms him, I can hell. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Mike Tyson, the fucking mid fifties, coming out and absolutely annihilating that. Can you imagine <laughs> it? Oh yes, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, man! Oh, he's back. I had Mike Tyson's back. No, he's no dude. He's just a he's just a, a trained fighter who's a different league to Jake Paul. If he wanted to, to cut loose, I just don't get it. We're, we're yeah. going to get a body one night, mate. We're going to get it. But Tyson's, Tyson's, too swi- Tyson's not going to do that, mate. He's too he's too switched on for that. I don't sure. know. Fuck. No. Well, he <laughs> might disconnect his head like you, man. Oh, but we <laughs> body tap or something like that. But nobody like Jesse Ferguson uppercuts, mate, that sends him to the shadow realm. You know, it's not even one of those fucking things. Oh, Rob, on. let me throw this. Rob, I'm going to throw this at you. And I'm just, just throwing this out there. Put yourself in the shoes of Mike Tyson, all right? You are once known as the baddest man on the planet. Everybody used to tune in to see you fight. Now, Rob, you're seeing, as Mike Tyson, all these YouTube guys, 
getting these huge paydays with no background, no real ability, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're Mike Tyson, do you go into this thinking, you know what? I'm just going to knock this motherfucker out and shut this YouTube train down. I don't know, man. I, I, I can't begin to even think what this fucking fight looks like. Do you get me? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Do you get like the, the old washed up version of Mike no, Tyson how do you and Jake Paul? It? It's 20 years since Mike has fought against Jake oh, we've Paul. We've got to look at him against Roy Jones. <laughs> We gotta, well, we gotta yeah, look yeah, at him yeah. against Roy Jones, and he looked good. He looked like he kind of carried Roy for a lot of that fight. Like Roy looked like he kind of, you know, they eased off. They were having that kind of, but he was looking like, you know, the Tyson of all the head movement was there, the hooks and all were there. But like, he's fucking sixty. Like, do you know what I mean? This guy's fucking Jake Paul is never going to pass a steroid test, is he? By the way, he's juiced up to the gills by by a long shot. Like, um, so I don't know where does that go. Um, or what does it even look like? Do you know that way? I don't. I don't know. Like, I think is is it is it scripted? If it's on Netflix, like, is it just an exhibition? Are there is there going to be no knockdowns? No, no twelve round decision. I don't know. Like, it's definitely not going to be a scheduled twelve round fight. I'll tell you that, Rob. Maybe eight. Ten rounds, maybe. I think eight. I don't think gonna, yeah. If, if, if any of you see Mike Tyson, like eight rounds, they can have a fiddle about. Then I'd say for, just take the money and run. Rob, if have you seen like you've seen the videos of Mike Tyson showing like people who want to, like, who maybe ask him questions how to get get to the body and he's pivoting and he's showing he, he could he could he could if he wanted to surely he but, maybe rip the body destroy him or something I don't know but then is his shot resistance gone like what if he walks onto a, what if Jake Paul knocks out Mike Tyson a la Buster Douglas fucking thirty something years later I don't know like that's what I'm saying I can't I can't fucking no what if he gets a little overconfident a little loosey goosey I don't know like it's just, well, I just well, and you also, like, the one thing that, like, when it comes to, like, trying to judge these fights, it kind of messes with me and seeing the outcome is if you go back and when you see when Floyd Mayweather had the exhibition against Logan Paul and he cracked Logan good and he just held him up. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, uh, I don't know what the hell the, the, their agreement really yeah, is. Like they, all, right? Honestly, all of those exhibitions stink. Every one of them stink. Like, there wasn't a good fight in any of them. There's been no good Jake Paul fight. There's been a couple of good knockouts. The Fury and him fight was a fucking shit fight. The other YouTuber probably beat Fury. McGregor and fucking Mayweather was shit. Like, the only one that was seminally interesting was... It's not even a word. A semi-interesting was the Ngannou Fury one because he ripped up the script and dropped him. Like, But other than that, every one of those cross-promotions has been absolute dog shit. Like, so, um, yeah, it's hard to get excited for him no matter who's involved, you know that way? Yeah, as we say, you just don't know when one of these guys is going to get hurt. That's the thing, and I don't know how that hasn't happened on some of the misfit shows as well. Like, there's been some severe mismatches been left lay right there. Like, I mean, look at remember I uh, even on the not even just the M shows. Remember that one was it a top ranked show? Remember that that yeah, uh, uh, the two women. Oh, that, that was last he got, he got knocked yeah. in thirty seconds. Oh, he should never have been in that ring before. Didn't you know how to defend herself? Oh, that was disowned. That was um, a straw, wasn't it? A Spaza or a straw do against somebody that one. Aye, ah, something like no, that. We housewife you, Matilda or Miranda got I'll battered. tell you. After, I'll tell you that what. After, again. after seeing Headley Scott live and trying to figure out how he, oh yeah, eighteen people. <laughs> I to forgot defeat. to mention him last week. I'm like, well, how the fuck that happened? Like, uh, yeah. that was un- wasn't that he was eighteen and fucking... one? Who the fuck Not, is yeah. he beaten, man? He yeah. was terrible. He was slapping. Did you see him? It was. It was. No, I never awful. saw him. You oh don't see him. He looked like he'd no, been dragged off the street it. smoking weed for the last ten years, buddy. He was. Yeah, well, let's not fucking hold that against him. <laughs> oh, he got some bad points as well. And he's, he's totally undersized. Like of his hundred and thirty pounds, eight pounds of it are dreadlocks. <laughs> it's just. It was I fucking forgot about him last watch. week, man. I thought the same as you, Matty. How the hell did he beat eighteen people? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I fucking those eighteen people. I want to just go and knock on each and every one of their doors and challenge them to a fight. I feel confident. <laughs> um. Anyhow. Uh. Yeah. So the, the shit show rolls on. Um. Let, we're gonna talk now about a fight that is definitely seems to be moving forward and one that is rumored the fight that is definitely seems to be mo- moving forward is uh, Cinco de Mayo weekend we're gonna have Canelo Alvarez uh taking on Jaime Munguia uh putting that undefeated record on the line in uh pursuit of all of those pretty belts that Canelo has at 168 um Steve this isn't the Benavidez fight 
But I'm not going to complain because I did list this among those fights that I deemed acceptable uh, when the other Charlo was floated around. I'm like, no, that's fucking ridiculous. Um, this, this, this is a decent fight. But maybe the funniest thing about it is that he, after all of this, it might still end up as a PVC promotion. <laughs> Did Canelo find out that Munguia isn't a Mexican after all? And I take it, eh? <laughs> so some sort of kind of like, you know... I don't know. They've, they've, they've kind of forced his hand, haven't they, really? And as Matty said, Al Heyman, he is... I know he keeps on wasting people's money and all, but Canelo tried to call his bluff. Says, right, I'm not going to fight it. I want to fight these guys, not any of these, any of the ones you've got for me. Um... Uh, you know, put them in front of me or I'm gone. And Heyman's like, okay, I don't care about the contract. Off you go to the zone. Then he comes back with his tail between his legs. And I don't know, he wanted Charlo, didn't he? Then he wanted Belanga. In light of those options, this looks like a good fight. And, and I think it will be, actually, Matty. I think it'll be f- as fun for as long as it lasts. Mungir is pretty reckless. He has got to be on the jab a little bit more lately, but he's with Freddie Roach now, a more offensively minded coach. I think Mungir will stand and trade, which would make it entertaining at least. And hopefully... Mungir can bring like a kind of an unpredictability to the fight, which will draw out Canelo. It might end up like Canelo Kirkland, I was thinking, catching him on the end of these shots, exploiting these gaps. That was but... such a gross knockout. Yeah, like a Kirkland's yeah. head almost spun around like an owl. Even up to that point as well, just finding him defensively reckless. I know Mungir is not quite as bad as that, but he'll believe in his power. He'll come and fight. And yeah, Al fronted him up and gave him the options and nobody was willing to pay him what he wanted for the opponent level that he wanted. So I think it's the best of a bad bunch, really. We all want to see Benavidez. Canelo has ducked that fight as far as I'm concerned. And I don't mind the Mungir fight in light of that. He's only got a few fights left, though. If he ends up retiring without fighting Benavidez, I think it will be a bit of a stain on his record. And they're talking about the Plant rematch. If Plant gets rid of... (laughs) Ah, Somebody off. who wants to see who wants to see that? Like, I mean, surely not. But Mungia Canelo, I'll take it. Yeah, I, I I think it's a definitely a fight that's worth uh, watching. I'm going to be tuning into this one. I uh, I bet they're going to have a decent undercard on it too. Um, Andy, for me, I just want to see what happens if Mungia touches Canelo good one time and has the chance to back him straight up and unload. I, I, it's, I, we haven't really seen anyone uh, be able to, to, to buzz him and do that uh, in quite some time. And I, I'm just curious, I'm just curious how the big dude is, uh, is, is going, uh, what, what he'll be able to do if he sees a chance. Cause we know he's not shy when it goes, it comes to throwing punches. Yeah. Well, I, I take the point. I think it will be an interesting fight to the point that, that, that Mungia is a kind of killer be kill type fighter. He will, he will stand in there. If, if, I'm assuming if he is hurt and that, he will be trading it out to the to the fucking bitter, uh, to the bitter end. So, but I also take the disappointment for you know for the Canelo side. Well, if you know if you look at Canelo, you know who he's no fighting basically. Um, then compared to this, uh, I'm still not happy with it. To be fair, it's an okayish fight as I say, but I, I just think that Canelo is as a as a few levels above on gear. As I say, that I suspect on gear will will give a good account. And he say he will be brave. He'll, he'll stand in there, but. I think Canelo will end up wearing them down. I think it'll probably be the body shots that maybe get him in the end. Um, saying that, providing that Canelo hasn't been got old overnight and sliding there the hill or whatever and that with the eye off the ball, so to speak. But another thing as well is I noticed it's was it May fourth you said Matty. So again, hopefully Monkey has been keen the proper adequate time to train for it as well. I mean, what is that? Six weeks? Five weeks? Six weeks? Uh, he fought yeah. Ryder at the end of January. I think it was like the 23rd or so something like that. So straight back into a camp then as well. So. Yeah, uh, no, he got about a six-week rest before getting uh, into an eight-week camp, give or take. Not not, yeah. not terrible. Oh. Yeah. And, 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 he didn't, and he didn't get messed around in that Ryder fight too much. He, he pretty much had his own way. Yeah, but he's had a lot of miles in the clock, though, mate. That fifty-four rain was, you know, again, okay. It wasn't, it wasn't the best, but it was a grueling rain. You had to make weight. You had to make the, you know, the sparring sessions and the training camps, not that thing. So he is got a lot of miles in the clock in that regard. Good well, point, Andy. What about skipped... him at one sixty-eight as well? What exactly. Well, he, 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 yeah. skipped, he skipped sixty, did he know? He wasn't at sixty for long. I mean, right up to 68. Well, I think maybe had one fight at sixty, possibly. Right up to sixty-eight. Now he, he had has, a handful. He of them. has, he has filled it. You can see he's clearly filled up uh, at the weight in terms of his upper body at the bang. But um, it's been, a, what was it, 27 possibly? But it's been a hard career for him, actually. 
I remember saying to Steve, you know, well, least... that Derry Vinchenko fight was fucking vicious. Yeah, exactly, mate. And you, you add all that up. Being a Mexican, fighting those Mexican gyms, come up as a, as, a, as a kid. I don't know about his amateur career if he's got any of that, but if he's got no amateur career, you can You know what kind of career he's had. Then he's been training in the gym. Those brutal sparring sessions they have done in those gyms in Mexico, man. So I think his first pro fight was uh, when he was like still like sixteen or something like that. I think he was a young yeah. kid like Can- Canelo. Canelo was nice spring chicken. He's f- pro at fifteen. You know, it's, it's going to catch up with him soon, soon as well. You know. So in I hindsight, suppose... Andy, they played a, ba- a blinder, didn't they, when they tried to get Mungia to fight Golovkin? Do you remember we ended up fighting Martin Rosian? And we thought, oh, he's too green, he's too young, Las Vegas rejected it. Bigger he's payday. been on everybody's lips since then, really, hasn't he? That brought him into the public consciousness. Aye. I wonder whether there was more of a play than they actually probably expected the fight not to get accepted, but they brought him into the public's consciousness then, into boxing, and he's been relevant ever since. Yeah, as, as I say, he's obviously... Mungia's first fight was the 16. The promoter's way at the time, was... actually... Ah, but they kept him active, and then I think Oscar, Oscar then got him signed up uh, no long after it, and that's when he started then vacating the belt and moving up in weight. Um, he's a decent enough fighter, mate, but again, I just think Canelo was just, you know, again, he's, he's, I think he's levels above, but I think he's also, uh, again, well, I, he's an old 27 though, mate, as I say, he's, you know, he's, he's, had a, he's had a hard, you, you look at that 54 reign, mate, and I, Box Reckon will tell you the, the, the full story. I mean, Christy, Boxwick's telling us that that guy, Iglesias, is 5 feet 8 when he's 6 foot fucking 2. It doesn't tell you the, uh, the full story. He has took a lot of punishment, as I say, making 54 at that title reign for at least, was it two years? He got, in, he got involved in a couple of high, heavy fights. He mentioned that Dervachenko fight, which was brutal as well. He can't keep taking that. And I say, he said he's having to make the weight in that as well. No, but 68, missing 60 entirely. Maybe he just felt like it wasn't worth kind of like cutting the weight again for a sustained period. But then again, he's, he's new jumping into another camp immediately after, no, no, no long after a, uh, a fight. You just don't know what he's nursing in terms of injuries and that as well, you know. So, but in terms of Canelo, I mean, you can say like being the face of the sport, he is. He is. You can, you can say that he's got the right to pick and choose at this point. But it's going to end with Benavides at some point. And if it is going to end with Benavides, then it, to me at least, or to my bad mind. Canelo's clearly waiting them out to see the weight. The weight is going to be key. And I'd yeah, imagine yeah. the longer it goes, the harder it's going to get for Benavides to strip that weight off. At You're right. And that's all it's going to be. Well, and the rumor is doing something for like an interim belt or something at 175 with Benavides and Vazdik. Um, Vazdik only had a, having a few fights um, in his comeback so far. I think that's a bad fight for Vazdik. I wouldn't go to, oh, again. I wouldn't go too far above the the weight limit in that one. I mean, it depends what Gavors it can make actually these days. Not so. Maybe it will be at seventy five, but it is at seventy five. Is yeah. it seventy five? So, again, mm. you got. It's, it's just got to watch, watch that. He's got to maintain the weight after this fight. You know, he's got to keep it low. Doesn't want to be chasing and draining himself from that. Or does Benavides does does does, does he prove he's he is that badass? Skip the weight and then just fucking just go to war. I, mean, I suppose Ben uh, Canelo would have a heavy clause in there as well in terms of the weight, the weight, and that as well, possibly. Yeah, it's, I don't, I don't know. The, it's an interesting fight for me, Rob. I'll give you last word before we move on to one more topic before our previews. What are you, what are you interested in? Sorry, Jesus, fuck you, ADD motherfucker. Yeah, don't be bullying me. Come on now. I think you're going a bit too far there. Right? Uh, Jesus. Uh, Jaime Munguia against Canelo Alvarez. Oh, yeah. I, I think Steve, Steve kind of said it best. We're not getting Benavides. It looks like a duck from Canelo. We could say it doesn't make business sense, but he's the one who says he's the face of boxing. Yada, yada. Boxer says one thing, does the other. Fucking usual story these days. Like, I don't think Canelo owes us too much, though. I think his resume up to the Golovkin, to two Golovkin fights was pretty solid. Um, fought a lot of Liam's and and that then in, in a kind of a cash grab really on the PBC and he's been doing what he wants for the last 10 years um, this was his sign off and this was the last we get to see of him the last two fights I'd be disappointed I kind of would like to see that passing of the torch sometimes um, but I think Benavidez is too hot for him at the moment Munguia I think is he's going to be too too much class for Munguia um, Munguia solid operator strong guy Jorobo guy, tough guy, but his style of fighting is gonna be ultimately what's not what knocks Miles off his career. Um and I just think he's made he's tailor made for Canelo to look good. 
stepping off from combinations um combinations um, and i just think he's got he's he's still got too much although he is showing signs of decline which is natural for a guy of his age he's been active since he's 15. he's got a lot of miles on the clock like um he's been up and down weights like it's nothing <laughs> um, several times over the last few years so you got to wonder would that take his a toll on him too and would he ultimately pay the price um, and come a cropper maybe to the overactive Mongia. It's it's an interesting fight. It's not. I can't remember. I think that Canelo Plant was a good fight. Uh, Canelo Saunders was a good fight. The kind of last you seen him at his best. Um, I thought he was good against Ryder, but not as convincing. Um, and I just think I still think Canelo has the edge. But if if the last two fights are between Mongia and Belanga, then it wouldn't be totally surprised to see one of them two maybe upset the apple cart either. I think that this is definitely Canelo's uh, most live opponent since, uh, you know, Bevel and Golovkin. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, well, I mean, no, that's... since Golovkin, he's fought. Oh, no, he had the third fight with Golovkin. Was that after or before Plant and Saunders? That was after Bevel. French and Saunders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but anyhow, it was... Uh, I, 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 I'm looking forward to it. So we got that one coming to us May 4th, uh, Vegas, I would assume. And one more topic. Uh, this is a rumor at this point in time, but it, there, there are talks that Terrence Crawford will be taking on Chris Eubank Jr. at 160 pounds. My personal hunch is it will be for the belt that uh, maybe they'll finally force uh, the Charlo to vacate at 160. Uh, the WBC, I believe that is. Um, but, um, Andy, I think this is a very interesting fight for Bud kind of slow, making his way up to 168, maybe hoping Fuck this will ice it. I still think it's, that's on the table. And, but I, and I think that, you know, very strategic fight too, having had Eubank in the gym with them, um, you know, Bomac should be able to come up with some sort of a game plan to dissect this guy, but I still see it going to points. I, that's just my hunch. Um, so as a fight sign, sorry. It's strongly rumoured. I mean, whatever, man. I mean, I suppose Crawford needs a fight. I'd like to see him active. But it's 60, really? Really? Um, I don't know. I mean, as, as we mentioned, I think 54 starting to kind of get a few fighters coming through that Bud could could definitely fight. I mean, He's not I, interested he, in hanging out. He, I think he's thinking, I, will, no. I can have one fight between this, but I want Canelo in September. If I'm in his mind, that's what I'm well, like. Canelo was never coming to 60. So Crawford was no, never No, no one's saying he exists. Yes. And he said he would. But you Crawford said he's going to go to 68. He's, yeah, he's fucking said he absolutely would go to 68. To no, then I don't, I don't give a fuck about the Eubank fight. Then. I just want to see Crawford fight Canelo then. I don't give a fuck. I mean, it's, it's, it's probably a weight tester, but I mean, it's, 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 it's probably safe money. He's probably done rounds with him. And you, you know he's done rounds sparring with him, possibly. Yep. 100%. So. Uh, I dare say Crawford wins by by method they, 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 of his choosing if he wanted to possibly. Um, I just don't rate you, Bank. I mean, Crawford's a killer, man. Come on, fuck. I mean, the, the Nutters thought it was going to be a it was going to be a, a a TKO, most likely a mercy stoppage um, for Crawford. Well, I don't know. I it's mean, I was, I was surprised. Like it's fucking. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Sorry, Go ahead. no. I mean, you're right because you know it's, it's six days. Well, I mean, you Bank is almost. It must be close to five, maybe lower uh, in terms of percentage and body fat. I mean, he looks awful. Look at the statement trying to make the weight for, for Ben. And he made the weight deliberately as well, just, just to prove that he could. And then, what's that taking out of him? For what reason? Yeah, and then, I'd say there'd have to be some him? kind of catch weight or whatever and agree to the title. I don't know. It's a, it's a strange one. Um, I totally see why Crawford is lining it up, but I'm not defending it at the same time. I think, like Andy said, 54 is there. Why not fight the winner of Zoo? And Thurman, although that's PBC, isn't it? But Zoo will surely be available. Um, maybe that's you know, I get I get it from Crawford. He's after waiting out in the cold for fucking basically ten years, looking to get unification fights. They froze him out of PBC, he had the last laugh on him, and now he wants the bread. Like he wants the fucking golden fucking goose before he retires. He wants Canelo. Canelo's after coming out and saying, if I beat Crawford, they're gonna say he's too small. Uh, if I beat Ben, but if he has a win at one sixty, it's that's a I get it. That's thing what, that you'd say. That's what that's what I'm saying. So I get it. Why I get why Crawford is maneuvering himself in that direction. 
I agree with Andy. They've had a look at you back and Crawford's probably thought to himself, I'd eat this guy. Like, but still at 60 pounds, like I know, and I think Eubank would be depleted at 60. So I don't really don't know what the fuck he's doing. Would he not be trying to, unless it is for a belt, I guess, um, finally trying to win a version of a world title. Um, I mean, that's I, reputable, I see, but... I see Hamid in the chat saying this is, uh, I wouldn't call it a cherry pick like some people are saying on Discord. And that. I mean... It's a, a it's a care, it's a it's a strategic play to try and get a bigger payday, but there's bigger fights out there, better it's fights a, for Crawford. It's a trade that we fight, can see. really. It's all yeah, it is, really. It's a trade fight. I know Floyd was mentioning fucking the Boots Ennis fight out of pure pettiness, but at the same time, Boots Ennis is he going to do what fucking they did to him with Boots Ennis and freeze him out? Like he, he needs a fight. Like so, he's, I guess he's not hanging around at forty seven if he's going to go straight to sixty. He probably walks around at fifty four anyway. Um, maybe 60 is not a stretch for him, but 68, like he started at lightweight, like, and he's 35 years of age. I can't see him going, like, like I could see him doing it. not a big 68, though, Rob. Yeah, I know, but he's still 60. He, he, he has ways of fucking looking very strong at 68 all the same. You yeah, know that way? Yeah. Um, and I just think, I don't know, but I'd, I'd love to see that fight, but I never know what that fight is going to look like. I can't, I can't, I don't know how it plays out. Like, it's, I'll have to see Canelo in his in his next fight to see what he's got left and see what could Crawford possibly go up and fucking beat this fucking shit out of him. I don't know. I guess Crawford thinks he can counter punch Canelo, and he's a good match for him. And stylistically, of course, he's he's probably best fighter in the world. Like, so you you give him a chance against anybody, but just fellas are not Superman. I always fucking you know certain fighters but can it do is, it. Like, and if, after watching all of this mediocre bullshit, people ducking every challenge that they could possibly find, it would be amazing to see somebody reach for greatness like that. That's why no, I want totally. to And I remember, I remember Floyd, like at the time, it's like, you know, he went up as far as 54, beat Cotto and De La Hoya, 54, 55 pounds. Um, and then people wanted him to go to 60 to Gol- for Golovkin. And he was saying like, no, I'm fucking too small. Like I'm a, I can make fucking 40 if I wanted to. It's, Weight classes for a reason. I know Crawford's on the bigger side, but he had to grow into welterweight as well not so long ago. So I don't know. Like I, I think the Eubank fight is not not too much of a risk for him, especially seeing as Eubank at sixty pounds would be horrific looking. But I don't think Eubank can make sixty pounds. So is this fight going to be at one sixty eight? And that's a real fucking gives it a real different kind of um, point of interest. But Crawford, I think, is good enough to beat anyone. He's a generational talent, but. The question is always asked for fighters to bite off too much and uh, more than you can chew towards the end of the career. Like, we're just reaching for the stars, you know, that way. Steve, last word, and we'll move into previews. Yeah, nothing too much, to be honest. I think it's a chance to legitimize himself for the Canelo fight. If Canelo fights him in September, then it all makes sense. Uh, the forgotten element of all this for me is another payday, another big payday for bloody Eubank, another periphery fight, not a circus fight, but another weird fight, isn't it? He seems to get them. He seems to get paid. He's going to get dragged in. Don't, don't really know what Crawford will do to him on the night. It's hard to say, but yeah, he gets an opportunity. And if, if Crawford's using it as a way to, <clears throat> excuse me, step towards Canelo, then I can I can see why they're doing it rather than sitting on the shelf. Yeah, just uh, keep it moving, make some money. Fill into the weight. I I think it all makes sense. In I'd love to hear the figures opinion. for this fight. By the way, I would love to hear them. Well, I... you know, the, after that Spence fight, Crawford definitely has a bigger buzz about him. He's going to be have some sort of built-in numbers at this point in time after that. So, but anyways, let's move on because it is getting later. Let's see here. All right, first card for us to uh, uh, mention. Going to have Pro Box card Wednesday. Of course, I love these things. Uh, going to have undefeated Marquez Valle. He's a great prospect taking on Rel Garcia, who is 13-1-1 one one right now. Uh, going to have Luke Santa Maria. He is a, a definitely a decent fighter. And this is back at welterweight, his more natural weight, against the 11-2 and two Nicholas Flaws. And a, a good uh, main event with Collage Dick. Uh, taking on Sullivan Barrera. God only knows if Barrera has anything left, but that uh, if he does, this could be a reasonably entertaining main event on Pro Box there. So uh, check that out Wednesday night. Steve, gotta love the Pro Box. They continue to provide. Yeah, I like the way they sort of get the contenders, pretenders, guys who've been up and down. Dave, Kelvin Davis, I think that's Keyshawn's brothers on the card as well. Uh, so And yeah, Barrera, uh, Kalazdic, good main event. Flaz has shown his... Toughness in the past, so Santa Maria. It's good matchmaking, really. 
Yeah, absolutely great match matchmaking. Brenner's no fought in, in what three years? Almost three years. Maybe. I'm just looking Maybe. at it now. July twenty one. There you go. Well, uh, best of luck to him. Uh, then moving on to Friday, going to have a card on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, Callum Walsh continuing his undefeated run, 9-0, and taking on the 11-3-1 Doran Yelusinov. Uh, going to have 15-0 and Fiergal McCrory taking on Carlos Carlson, 25-7. and uh, Joe Ward there, uh, Rob, he's uh, keeping going after that. I think he had a freak injury in one of his fights. Is why he's his got debut, yeah, he broke his, leg, broke his leg in his debut. Yeah, taking on 29 and 4 and 1 uh, Derek Webster. So uh, these uh, fight pass cards are starting to get better. Uh, Tom Leffler is the matchmaker on these. So, um, And Dana White has said he wants to play in the boxing game. So maybe keep an eye on that space. Um, let's see here. And then on Saturday, going to have a card uh, from the Rainton Meadows Arena. Uh, all sorts of interesting things going on here. I thought going to have Nathan Forrest six and zero against Kai Richmond four and one for the Northern Area Lightweight Title. Thomas Patrick Ward taking on Amani Bariki, uh, Callum Walton. Uh, well, I think maybe that's where the card quit being interesting, actually. So anyhow, going to have that one. I don't know if there's any television for that. God only knows. Let's see here. <clears throat> this one's going to be on BT Sport from Birmingham. Uh, gonna have Liam Davies against Eric Robo Robles Ayala. I think we all just know him as Eric Robles consistently. Uh, for the IBO Super Bantamweight title, I know you love those folks at the IBO, Steve. Yes. Uh, Nathan Heaney and Brad Pauls in uh, battle for the British middleweight crown. Uh, Pierce O'Leary, uh, undefeated, taking on also undefeated Hovanes Martirosian. Uh, for the international WBC super lightweight title and uh, Zach Park and Parker taking on Tyrone Zig, uh, Dennis McCann taking on Brad Strand, both them undefeated Ethan J or Elton James taking on Owen Cooper, both of them undefeated. Actually, that might be an I am a little far away. Joe Joyce and Cash Ali. And then uh, Ezra Taylor against Prince Oki Oko Narti. Fuck me, Andy, this card it kind of appears to be stacked, actually. Yeah, it'll be an Uncle Frank special, mate. But another fucking midnight finish, possibly as well. Um, In what country? Fuck. Well, yeah, several countries, mate. Spanning many time zones. Frank goes against well. time zones. <laughs> oh my word, man! Fucking Aussies will be getting up for the uh, going for lunch, mate. And the card will still be going on. Time's only an illusion for Frank. <laughs> I know, mate. But uh, there was one point I was going to make actually on this card. That Mexican that's fighting Liam Davis, he actually beat Lee McGregor actually in, in Scotland. I don't know if many people remember that fight, but it was, it was it was an upset at the time. I think McGregor had been out the ring for uh, a, wee, a wee period of time actually. Uh, that Tyrone Zuga is fighting Zach Parker. He got iced off. Uh, I'm sure Rocky Fielding beat him. I think. Yeah, Rocky Fielding beat him back in 2018. He's got. It'll be a bit of a patchy record, to be fair. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm I think Parker will probably, he definitely win. Possibly, I'm not too sure if he won by stoppage or anything like that yet. But um, what else you got in that card? I'm saying, get the details again. Uh, Joe Joyce, that's just obviously a, a kind of confidence builder again, and that's just I think this Cash Ali even fought at Midlands level or area level. I'm not sure. Well, I um, think what he did, he bit somebody. No, David Price. Was it him? Ah, it? Right. Yeah. right, right, And uh, the the Belgian that's fighting the Irish kid, and I, I don't know much about him. Um, to be fair, um, is it Pierce O'Leary? I think he's he's been looking good, isn't he? The last the last number of fights, not so. Yeah, it's, it's okay, mate. But again, I, I'd imagine that'll be it'll be a dragged out process. And if you get sounds like an old fucking box well. nation card or something, doesn't it? Aye. Yeah. Well, Bunsy on the sofa with yeah, Steve Lillie. of all satanic fucking show or something. <laughs> Well, there's box, you know, box nations made that made a reappearance on YouTube. Well, there, totally unrelated to again. anybody, of course. You know, you know, a great bunch of lads, obviously, across here. <laughs> we know who are great bunch of lads, and they're, if they're yeah. employing anybody that they want to pay um, over yeah. the over the top salaries too. Yeah, but to go to, to, go, to go to Dubai for that meeting, but no you know money who, in boxing, but you know what? <laughs> no, your level, Rob. You know what I'm saying? No, that's fucking our level. That's right. <laughs> Jesus, that only brings problems anyway. Fuck's sake. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Too much or no enough, it always causes problems. Fuck money. Yeah. Exactly. Dave, for the love of the sport, mate. Fuck everybody. But good card, Steve. Good card. I'll give you last word, then we'll <laughs> move to the next one. Yeah, just quickly, there are some good fights. McCann, I think it didn't he look a bit wobbly in a previous fight. I think he fought that 
oh, that guy who gives everybody trouble. He's fighting Brad Strand this time. Zoiga, I don't know what he's been up to lately. I remember him fighting Smigger Smith years ago. Uh, Zach Parker lost to Ryder. O'Leary's a, a good banger. I'm sure I've seen his opponent, that Marta Rossian. Against somebody, can't remember who. There's a lot of Martyrosians. I think it's yeah. Armenia, basically. Even this one, I think I've seen him. Robles, Andy said he fought um, Lee McGregor against Davis. That'd be good for Davis. Is a good fighter, actually, from Telford. He's exciting. He's really improved, Davis. And Heaney wasn't supposed to beat Bentley. He's coming out quick, fighting Brad Pauls. They're trying to nail down the Stoke card. And Joyce, a bit of name value coming up back against Cash Alley. Bit of everything here. Bit of an Aussie show, a lot of 10 rounders. It's a, it's a good Saturday night domestic card, I think, really. So what you're saying, Steve, is you think your man can fight McCann? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's a bit elusive, but I think I'll get to him in the end. You need Terry McCann anyway. <laughs> Ex-British champion, you know. Ger or Jerry McCann. Yeah. Hide and seek that, champion. Anyway. We got that going on Saturday. Let's see here what was next. Let's see here. That's a such uh, an underrated one. comment that Marty missed it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Jerry Not. McCann, he's a great hide and seek champion. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get out of here. It's not. <laughs> Do you not remember the old Daily Sport? Uh, yeah, well, you know, hide and seek. Oh, fuck all. Hide and seek <laughs> champion found dead in the cupboard. No, <laughs> I'm still no, speaking about no. your parlays, Marty, for the weekend. You know, oh, fucking Christ. Anyhow, I don't know if there's any uh, television for this one, but I ran across this decent card from the Fox Theater in Redwood City. Did you have the draw in Vegas, by the way, Matty? I, I, I did that not. One. Oh, I did not. Sake. I had I had Vargas, so I got a push. Oh, for Lucas, it's better than a pull. Amen. So this Pushing card in California, <laughs> this card in California is going to have uh, uh, Peter Kumukov. Uh, uh, he's undefeated at uh, fourteen and zero, or maybe that's eleven and zero. Got some shit on my stream. Matty, you can't be bringing Peter Kumukov <laughs> chat at five past ten, man. Yeah. Yeah. Peter Kumukov, <laughs> Steve, he's, uh, he's taking on, on the stream, He's taking on Vaughn Alexander, who I believe we saw in a pro box card about a month ago. Oh, come, yeah. on, come, on, come on, come on, come on, my screen. Yeah. Mm. And on on my screen. But Rob, this is why I pulled this card. I thought this hey. was very interesting. From the great state of California for the Boxing Union of Ireland Celtic Super Middleweight Ooh. title. Going to have Tommy Hyde against Craig McCarthy. That's Gary Hyde's son, is it not? His son, yeah, absolutely. Uh, good on him. Yeah, actually, I heard good things about that kid. Uh, more power to him. Hope he does well. Yep, a couple other decent-looking fights on there. Comebacking Vic Facias, who has had a god-awful number of fights fall through in the last few years, apparently, uh, is taking on 14-2 uh, and two Jorge Viegas. Uh, then you're going to have 14-1-1 one one Manuel James going in against 7-1 and one, uh, Pedro Panuri Borgaro. Uh, so, yeah, decent little card there. I don't know if there's any TV for that, but that, uh, just a couple, couple decent scraps on that one. Next going to have from the uh, Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. Wait, do we want to do this one? No. No, wait. Let's do this one fucking first, actually, for the love of God. Um, so, I just thought this one was weird, Steve. Here's a bizarre fight for you. Uh, from Lynchburg, Virginia, uh, topping this card, you're going to have Scott Sigmund. We've seen him in a number of fights. Oh, he's Roy Jones. Yeah, on one of Roy's weird fights. Against Still fighting, still somehow undefeated, now at light heavyweight, Dusty Hernandez Harrison. There's a random prospect from the past. Still 36-0-1, Steve. Hey, man, I can't believe they're finding these. I Sigmund fought Roy Jones for the WBU German version cruiserweight title in 2018. You almost forgot been... about that one. <laughs> I think that must have been Roy's. <laughs> <laughs> that might be Roy's final fight, you know. Oh, no, he fought that Anthony Pettis afterwards, which, which was sanctioned as well. Yeah, Sigmund was his one from last fight after Roy beat Bobby Gunn. I think things were starting to <laughs> take a bit of a downward turn. <laughs> Purple Patchy was after hitting there, Roy. <laughs> Jesus, Mary Oh, Joseph. my God. Yeah, but Dusty Hernandez as well, Matt. He had a I fight mean... in the Metaverse, didn't he, not so long ago? Yeah, Steve, he did, that that's one. right. Not <laughs> Uh, this is Roy, man. <laughs> so, yeah, there, I have there's nothing more weird, to say. There's your weird card of the week. But let's go to that one from the Cosmo in Vegas. Going to be an excellent card. We'll obviously get to the main event. Uh, Going to run off the undercard here. Going to have 12-1 and one, Tristan Kalkruth against Marquise uh, Weston, who's 15-2-1. Uh, 
Darius Fulgham still running that 10 and 0 record going up against Norberto Gonzalez, 24 and 15. I think I've seen him sturdy guy. Eric Priest, 12 and 0 taking on Jose Sanchez Charles. He's 21 and four Floyd Schofield on this card. He's a good looking talent taking on the 13 and one Estuary Suero. Uh, yeah. Steve, not a terrible uh, card. Uh, looks like a couple good of card. good card. Yeah. Fulgham's a banger. Priest decent. Schofield can definitely punch. He's 16 and over 12 knockouts. He's, only 21, and these opponents actually was a prospect at one point. Estuary Suero uh, from Dominican Republic. He went in an all Dominican battle in the PBC against Starling Castillo and lost. And now he's Epa. in the away in the away corner now. So I think Schofield's going to bang him out. Yeah, it's it's decent actually. This. Yep, it, it's a good looking card. But the one that I'm really looking forward to is the main event on here. Going to have my boy William Zapata, the punch throwing mofo. Taking on Maxi Hughes off of his uh, what many view as a robbery loss against uh, George Cambosis from Oklahoma a few months back. Uh, Andy, I think this is a, is a good fight, good test for uh, Zapata. Hughes can give him some problem, but I do think the pressure, the punches are going to wear on Hughes, and he is going to come late to Zapata, who I think is a real player in the lightweight division. Two south paws as well, mate. It'll be interesting. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, obviously, Zapata's got the power. Uh, Max is obviously a kind of classic boxer. Um, I, I get. I kind of agree with you, but it'll be interesting to see if he can. If he does get touched, Hughes, as he can he stand up to it, and if he can stand up to it, as, 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 uh, for how long? Um, I agree with you. I think can the Cambosis. He won the Cambosis fight. Mm. I thought it was a disgusting uh, decision. Um, but this is this is a different test altogether, just because the Zapata's supposedly coming at his prime is that big hitter. Um, so, and he, again, you just don't know. So, it's an interesting fight. I would probably... I, I, I don't write Maxi off, to be fair, but I just I just don't think he's got... If it is a competitive fight and it does go the distance, I just don't think he's going to get a shake in the cards, mate, to be fair, eh? I just don't yeah. see it. Plus, yeah. it's a pay as one of Oscar's boys and it's Oscar's show, so... Fair I think play to be- Maxi for taking it. Hopefully he wins, but he's going to have to... He's going to have to do more, he's going to have to at least drop him a post a couple of times, and even then that might not even be enough to kind of get the win. We saw it happen on Friday night. A um, couple so, times. <laughs> yeah, so again, he just, he just, he just, he just needs to up it a wee bit, I think, as, as well, and just like leave no dispute with the judges, but it's, I just don't see it happening like that, because it's a pay does power just could be the equaliser, whereas it's, it's a difference between winning a close, you know, winning a close round late, Maybe like a couple of heavy shots. Like, oh, that's just different there. You know, that's just that's what kind of favours the judges a wee bit and that. So, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a hard one for Maxi. And that he's going to have to box, you know, off the jab pretty well. He will do a lot of countering. I would think use a lot of the ring. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a hard ask to be fair. Absolutely, is a hard ask. Uh, Zapata, young, strong, very active in the ring. Uh, Rob, what are your thoughts on this one and, and how Zapata might play in this 135 pound division if he gets through this fight? Um, I think he's up there. I think um, Lomachenko is going to be uh, Cambosis quite easily. So that could set up a fight right here between him um, and Lomachenko for the title. I don't know really. Um, I like Zapata. I think he's all action. I think he's going to stop Maxi Hughes, maybe. Some, somewhere after round eight. Um, I think it's just going to be an accumulation of volume. Ends up breaking him down, maybe cutting him. Um, but Maxi Hughes is a good fighter. I don't know. I just, I think like Andy's saying, he's up against it, isn't he? Like he's being brought in as an opponent on an Oscar show, Oscar card. And even if he wins fucking seven rounds, he might only win five rounds, you know, that way. So, but I still, I don't, I don't see it playing out that way. I just think Cepeda with the pressure, cutting off the ring, um, punches from fucking all over the place. I just think he'll, he'd be too much for him, too hot for him on the night. That, that's my hunch. And, uh, man, sometimes these, uh, when things are consensus, Steve, uh, we're, we're missing something. We all end up shocked. Are you going to be among the shocked if Maxi Hughes has his hands raised in victory on Saturday night? 
Well, yes, but we probably shouldn't be. I think, as Andy mentioned, Maxi beat Cambosos. We all saw that. That that was bollocks, man. Cambosos. Didn't he's on a great much. run. Like if you yeah. if you call the, if you call that a W and you really look back, like he's rebuilt and he is on a fantastic run where he's been an underdog in most of these fights he's won. Absolutely, and I mentioned it to him when he came on the pod as well. I was at the first fight that sort of bounced back. He fought James Fryers in Belfast, who was an unbeaten prospect. Maxi was brought over to lose British title eliminator. He beat him. Fryers never fought again. Hughes went on a mad run. As you mentioned after that, and ended up at this level and beat Cambosos. I thought Cambosos was sort of shuffling around and working, but he wasn't landing anything. I thought that was a ridiculous decision. But there's there's levels. The player is a different style. He's looked like an absolute wrecking machine. He did have one sort of dodgy fight a while back, but this is a going to be a real test. Hughes will show us a lot about Zapata. I think nobody wants to fight him, but Hughes could mess him about a bit. Hughes isn't afraid to fight anybody. He goes into the backyards. He's a road warrior. He's got a good engine. He won't be intimidated. Good boxing brain. If he gets into a rhythm, it could be interesting. And he's not afraid to get dirty a bit when needed either. He threw the elbow in against Cambosos quite egregiously. Um, if Maxi gets to the cards, as Andy mentioned, I think he might be holding on <laughs> at that point because uh, Zapeda is a high-activity fighter, to say the least. Very physical, very strong. Lots of power. He'll be pushing Hughes to the ropes. If Maxi Hughes can probably move early, first five, six rounds, mess him around a bit, maybe win a round or two here and there. Can he keep him off late in the fight? That's the thing for me. Zapata's punch is the equaliser. Hughes lacks the punch to equalise. I don't think he punches hard enough to keep Zapata off him. There's going to be fighters who are going to outskill Zapata. Talking about fighting Stevenson, that's a different one altogether. But this will give us an insight into how he deals with that kind of style. And if anyone's deserved a win on the big stage, it's Maxi, but it's an uphill task. I'll be surprised if he wins. Well, you would be getting pretty good money on that return, I think. I haven't looked at it, but uh, he is definitely coming in an underdog. But you guys will be able to check that out Sunday morning, Saturday, stateside on DAZN, which uh, you can watch if you have some sort of a new Roku stick or uh, an old fire stick. But apparently the old ones don't work for shit, and that's the problem that no, they're not telling anybody about. So anyhow, anyhow, Steve, I think we have finally wrapped all of that up. And if it's okay with you, we can move to the value of the week. Absolutely, Matty. I am more than ready to move to the Bellew of the Week. Uh, people have been sending me stuff all week. I've got as much as I can off you, but you know how it is. We'll, we'll see how we get on. Matty's here. Andy's here. Rob's here as well. To play us in, uh, the delights down under this this weekend. They've, they've had a bit of a visitor to the Today Show. He seems to turn up everywhere. Ozzy Smith might be disgusted. But we're absolutely pleased to see him. Let's have a quick look at the clip here. I love a Chinese meal. I just Hi. love it. Um, you know, how much trouble can you get in? Gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest. What is the charge? Eating a meal? A succulent Chinese meal? <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> well, that clip is ingrained in Aussie culture, right? And now one bloke in the UK is going viral for his love of Chinese meals. His name is Big John. Mm -hmm. And he knows his way around a Chinese menu. Check this out. Fashion all of the Chinese. Bah! Curry sauce. Sweet and sour sauce. Sweet and sour chicken on Kong style. Very nice indeed. Plain chow mein. Egg fried rice. Roast up Chinese style. Creme de la creme dish of Chinese. Right, what we got in here? Salt chili king prawn. Mini spring rolls. Keep the old woman happy. <laughs> oh my God. Sweet and sour pork balls. Bon appetit. Sweet and sour pork. Oh, there's nothing better sometimes. I mean, that video that you just watched is, that had 5 million views on TikTok and He's Big John has amassed nearly 400,000 followers online. He's now touring Australia with his son, Johnny, putting our Chinese food to the test. Mm. And they join us live in the studio, guys. Round welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You guys are bloody legends. Yes. Well, to end up in Australia after eating Chinese <laughs> is, uh, is a bit surreal. I'll get told off for saying surreal. They when it is. You never thought it would come to this. No. Oh. How long is for, by the way, man? Oh, There's amazing. another four minutes. Oh, your man's lighting him up. Your man's like an Australian Aussie. He's an Aussie Aussie, uh, basically. He's like some <laughs> senior as well, mate. And uh, in your budgie smugglers, you're a specimen. And, and John gets all like sensitive and all this stuff, making puppy dog eyes at him. And then uh, it's mad because he's out in Australia. And a, a young lad that used to play Astro, he's only like 22, he's out in Australia, like on his Insta story. 
here you go, it's Big John, right? To see Big John going around with the fucking bucket hat and this in the fucking speedos, right? Next minute he has a fucking selfie with Big John, and I'm like, Tommy, man, come on, like, did I not fucking teach you better? But then two seconds later, he's photoshopped one of his mates' faces onto Big John's body. Good man, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> boss. <laughs> fucking boss. Steve, I, I, I gotta tell you, while that video is playing, I had never hoped for a copyright infringement so hard. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm telling you right now, but you, you missed the finer detail with that video of me and his kitchen by. He's got all that greasy fat food that's going to fill his arteries up by and the great the cheeky bastard even had the... the the inhumanity of a fucking diet bottle of cola in your line next to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, What's all that about? Smoker. What is all that about? Five million views of it, uh, that video, apparently, of him coming in with the Chinese, that fellow was saying. Five million losers watched that then, I tell you. Including us! Yeah. Oh, she probably, oh, she probably <laughs> watched about a million of them, by the way. <laughs> ah, fucking fat bastard. The fuck, uh, man? You send your you prisoners go. there and now Big John? You guys are fucked up. <laughs> they can keep Big John. Big John went there of his own volition. Some of us yeah. weren't as fortunate. Um, <laughs> Ozzy does be sending me non stop Big John footage, by the way, on Insta for the whole week. He don't be on the pod, but I get a Big John update once a, once a day. I won't tell you what he says, but you can imagine. <laughs> oh, dear. Literally, well, literally daily updates, by the way. Yeah, he loves Big John. He pretends he doesn't, but he does. Uh, Big John is being seen in Australia. One man who's turned up here. Leicester fans stunned. Why are they stunned? As Tony Bellew turns up at training ground and Kalechi Ikianacho showcases his skills. Of course, Andy, they'd be stunned to see the bomber turning up out out of captivity. Like a sight in a Bigfoot or something. He's like, oh, there's that fella that was doing a TikTok to Pitbull's fireball last week. <laughs> he hasn't been seen in a while. This is when you need this <laughs> yeah. is when you need Kem a roof today, like cry to kick him to the heat or something like that when he walked in through the door like he did against that Sparta Pride Keeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the difference here, Rob, is that people are actually trying to find Bigfoot. Ah, right. Tony. He's loving life at Leicester, showing off his skills. What else have we got here? Here's one for Sorry, you. Sorry, I just like to note I did laugh at Maddie's joke there. I just was muted for anyone or not. I didn't leave him with a tumbleweed. <laughs> Laughed at us. <laughs> <laughs> there's the there's the squad there. We went through them earlier. Uh, four in a bed, Matty. What did you watch it through? Were you on the zone watching the big fight or? I got it on regular cable pay per view. I don't trust the zone feed enough. What type of money were you having to put down for the experience? Oh, 70 bucks. <laughs> you also have to consider the fact yeah. it left when I went to work bills. and it was still Good on God. four hours after I got home from work. Seven dollars seventy seven an hour, Matty. <laughs> but, hey, but if you'd have given me if you'd have fucking what's it called? If you'd have PayPal me thirty five, I would have just fucking WhatsApp video called you and you could have watched it from my house with Face me. Time. Would have been better. Mike. She, That's she, what she I might, want she, you to do is make fun of me during my free time. She exactly. People, when I hear people say that they actually hate money, I show them a picture of you, by the way. This because this guy's a fucking shame. You fucking hate your money, man. You keep spending that <laughs> shit on fucking that. I like watching boxing. Hell, and, man. Andy, do you know what I'm? Do you know what I'm going to be doing at the end of this month? Go hopefully get a boat off or something dollars, mate. I'm doing that. <laughs> No, Seventy dollars. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to Arizona for the Liam Wilson uh, Oscar Valdez fight with Sinisa Estrada and Yacosta Valle on the undercard. No, oh, she's not the toilet mm. season. Yeah, and I and and the tickets nine rows back from the ring for a hundred bucks. Jesus, there you go. Fucking Have you heard the prices? Kate, I don't go into that one. No, <laughs> I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> Have you heard the prices of the Garcia Haney? Two hundred and fifty pounds starting in the nosebleeds. Just what kids. I did. Go the That's, day of and pick up all the stuff. tickets people paid for that they that they're trying to get rid of in the blink. In New York on a fucking that's a that's a rough week with hotels in New York and a two hundred and fifty starter and before you fucking put your hand in your pocket in New York City, that's a fucking tough night, like. Uh, you'd be surprised if New York even sanctioned Rob after last week. I know it's value of the week and all, but for me, you know, with New oh, York State Athletic well. Commission. New York state of mind. He uh he fucking lost the plot. I'm not buying it now. Someone was saying last week, like, is it all theatrics? And I was like, no, he must be like Daniel Day Lewis. But like honestly, I'm not buying that shit, man. He's coming out with all the Alex Jones, Kanye shit, the fucking boy Hoimian Grove. He's trying to get out of the fight, like any 
he's either trying to get out of the fight or he's going into the fight knowing full well he's going to lose it but well, back in it today I want to give you another perspective right? because I was thinking about this as well and I've watched the kind of build up and I take, I take all the points now it does look like he's, he's, he's he needs an intervention but then I'm not saying he's Ali but remember Ali against the, the first fight against Lister Listen. he's losing the plot at the way in and his fucking heart rates through the roof like, I think he's, yeah maybe he out. thinks that's the, his version of this like yeah, do you know, know what I mean but... Hollywood satanic cults are trying to kill me because I know yeah. too much Garcia, and I'm in this Ali fight with Devin cool. Haney like it's like you know what I mean it's he's like, going to walk to the ring with Richard D. Hall held in his belt Rob I, I see he, he, he deleted that comment about being raped or something, being raped or something. <laughs> fucking it's just yeah it's all a bit like contrived oh, it's like he's trying to pull a can like in his head I'm sure he thinks this is fucking fantastic you know what I mean like whatever he fuck he's doing but like Polly Malin as you said like even if he is genuine with this shit like Polly was brilliant on Pro Box he's like this guy's a fucking he's like I, they're, they're, this is not a tragedy guys This there's no somebody involved with this guy he's, this guy's 25 years ago he's a full grown man he's got 100 million dollars He's accountable for his own decisions, okay? You guys can stop kind of feeling sorry for this guy. He's going to keep doing it, guys. You understand me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's like Paul A, by the way. Paul is fast. <laughs> I mean, honestly, see, see if he's got a chance and go back to that Pro Box channel and just, if he if he, if he he manages to search for the one when he mentions about about uh, Tony Weeks potentially having a gambling problem, that is absolute gold, man. Oh, fuck me, it's gold. He, it's, he repeat, he's, he's got no proof. But he just repeats it like four or five times. Yeah, well, you know, you know it's potentially he's got a gambling problem, you know, guys. You know, this is getting you know, quite suspicious, you know. And he yeah, that's what people don't much. understand. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, you know, he's maybe got debts. No, I'm like, oh, fuck's sake, Paul. I love a Chinese meal. <laughs> oh, Chinese time, is it? You ought to just cut that. You ought to just cut that, Steve. That'd be I was trying to actually. delete it. Sorry, Andy. I wasn't meaning to kill you, so I was trying to delete that video. <laughs> I, I like that live Chinese meal quip, damn it. <laughs> it should just be part of the part of the fucking show. One I, one I should have cut, though, Matty, over the weekend when AJ was he was about to go on his rant, but they managed to stop him, and he did something. What was it? He said something like, you sit can't, Fury can't, and I was going to put Jade can't on the end. <laughs> 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 Couldn't quite get it in time. Oh, dear. I'll tell you one like, thing, though. What Bond said there on national television, we wouldn't even say on the pod. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> she, she was dying of cancer. Like, Whoa, what am I? I found it very entertaining. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I. Right, and then, like, what was the, what was the word they used? The T word, the, like, with the wig on and stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Can't make any jokes, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I know. Cancelled straight away. You, you see why he, he never made it? He never made it to the top, Steve. Eh? You, you see why? Uh, can't be with the days. You could drop the fucking T bomb on the <laughs> Scott free. I'll, I'll tell you that I'm just glad that Bunce isn't on the comms for women's boxing. He he would be done in an instant. It's oh, they get him. Thing. I think they get him on all right, don't they? With you this need guy to fucking collab with Bunce. You need to get him on the chicks with Dig and get the fucking real truth about women's <laughs> boxing out there. No, that's exactly what we need. Oh, the dear. chicks with Dig needs you, Joe Kennedy, Jane Couch, <laughs> Steve Bunce, and the guy. The guy, yeah. Oh, Canelo Alvarez. <laughs> I'm, I'm not you. kicking I'm not kicking Joe Kennedy to the curb for that bunch. <laughs> for the, yeah, for the, say, go on, for the sorry for the listeners who were looking for that um live pod we we've decided the venue. Um we're doing it at Dillian Dillian White versus Christian Hammer in Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that's the only hammer brought to the event that night. I and Mayo, I and Mayo, I went the fucking jar of Mayo bags. I ain't going to that shit. I think you're fine. I think you're fine as long as there's no uh, Italian football. Player in the area. <laughs> no, oh, no, I don't know, Matty. You might need a geography lesson, Hermano. <laughs> well, talking of geography lessons, Connor Ben, there he is on the picture, was over at the weekend, and so was uh, Manny Pacquiao. And Eddie had plenty to say. Let's have a listen. It's a big event. You know, um, you're asking the wrong person because I'm a hardcore fight fan. And he's one of my idols. And I find it quite sad. But I get it. People want to watch that kind of stuff. Just a shame that you, you have to watch an all-time legend do that, you know. But I get it. Money's money. Good luck to everyone. Eddie, appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, you'll be right in front of that money, Eddie. He'll be right in front of that fucking money. Sorry, philosophical of a fellow with his... 
from a fellow with his pockets overflowing from another trip to Saudi Arabia. He's a lot more zen these days. It's, uh, it's, it's a hard life, eh? <laughs> taking, taking, taking money off his excellency just to get fucking told but you, you know, how it's going to be happening. On his terms as well, by the way. His excellency will tell you when it's happening. Yeah. He'll hold your hand and tell you. You wish him well, well, of course we do. Wish him well. Uh, Still waiting on that fucking phone call from his excellency. Do they do phone calls these days? Oh, come on. We'll know you got it. We'll know you you, uh, got that phone call for watching an event and see you holding hands with him as you walked to ringside. You know, we'll, yeah, you know we we'll, got it with we'll, fucking hang dressing like fucking Floyd Mayweather and them fucking ski boots and all walking around with handbags, fucking <laughs> stuff full of money. We we'll, don't we'll have we don't have fucking Frank Warren walking up to us like he did Adam, Adam Carroll and telling us he's a fucking wanker. Doesn't have a clue. That'd be nah, 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 nah. be a lot of that if we got into the mainstream. Nah, nah, nah. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll have Eddie, we'll, we'll, we'll have Eddie Hearn fucking up to us saying, like, "What are you fucking saying?" <laughs> <laughs> but the better point we've had all the Saudi money, so we'll be able to afford an SES protection team. So Eddie's fucked. So he's got nah, he, he can't do nothing. Uh, Benson ah, Benson tweeted out from 2016 to 24, Joseph Parker was fourth, and then he listed them: Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, Joe Joyce, etc., etc. Andy Lee jumped in and said, and also fought Huey Fury and Carlos Takam when they were at the top of the game. <laughs> I'm, not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure when. Huey Fury was at the top of the game, but I heard huh. he's getting his man strength. Yes. Was, it you, Robert, was, men- was it you, Robert, was mentioning about Andy getting interviewed off Matthew Macklin and said they fucking hate each other? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think they like each other, do they? It was a very awkward interview, like, fucking can't stand each other. And he said that to him, didn't he, in the head-to-head, like, I fucking don't particularly like you, like, in the fucking... He was trying to call him out that time when he just went to Booth and he didn't want to take the fight because it was his first fight with Booth, like, or whatever. And then Macklin was accusing him of ducking, like, so he didn't like that at all. Like, yeah, he's got a fucking bit of a streak to him, buddy. With certain, with certain guys, like, definitely. But you wouldn't blame him. Macklin's a fucking shithead. Where's he going with that fucking hair? I'm not saying anything about Macklin. Obviously, he's a great lad. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing a, a great job, guy. in my opinion. He's, still, he's doing a great job somehow, still. He's uh, trying to look like, like Kitty Murphy these days with that hair, do man. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be really? ups- ex- accepted awards with fucking talking about Greenpeace with Greta Thunberg and all like a fucking little bit of <laughs> <laughs> and if there's a, I just want to go in my bed <laughs> <laughs> Great, as well for you Matty <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why but I, I quite like this partnership like just just always no fucks given isn't it man <laughs> it's an unlikely friendship isn't it I love the way he's wearing his OnlyFans jumper as well. Uh, <laughs> and, and, he's, and he's got the MAGA hat on as well, for fuck's sake. That could have a he's different a connotation troll. for OnlyFans, <laughs> couldn't it? He's never even been to this country to fight. <laughs> he's a bad troll, isn't he, man? The more sticky he gets, the more he hangs out with Farage. Like. Amazing. Oh, dear. We want to be honest here. We want to be honest, exactly. Hope you fucking die. Talking of honesty, there's elusive wrath. Him of uh, footage analysis. Fuck this guy. He's, he's, he's an analyzing <laughs> photographs now. He says Tyson Fury is <laughs> Richard D. Hall. Anthony Joshua's knockout to Francis and Garno. Does a picture tell a thousand words? I say Joshua. Yeah. What's he Tyson Fury is a crisis actor. <laughs> yeah, what's the wrath? <laughs> <laughs> he has been at a lot of these big events. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. I don't know what's going on with Fiori, man. He looked, you know, I don't know. He looked discombobulated and very hyped up over Saudi Arabia this weekend. I, I, think, I think he sneezed on the salt pot or something. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Shot yeah. in a way like a ventriloquist. It was good when he when Rangano was like, "Listen, stay quiet because I'll wipe your ass in the ring." He's like, "If I lose it in a real fight, my friend, you are short work like this." <laughs> it's like Fury is like, "No problem," and I was like, "Yeah, right, pal." <laughs> <laughs> yes, Steve. Yes. Uh, Jason Chuck was coming. Andy Lee versus Matthew Macklin. Real Irish versus the little Irish. <laughs> 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 uh, Chuck was on one tonight. He's on good form. Right, final couple from me. We have another video as well. Don't worry. Uh, Jake Paul's manager, Nakisa Bidarian, uh, responds to Eddie, er- Eddie Hearn. What's he in? The fucking Game of Thrones? 
<laughs> one of the Bedarian dynasty. <laughs> incredibly sad, he says that Jake is fighting Mike Tyson, says Eddie. Bedarian said it's incredibly ironic and, as usual, hypocritical of Eddie Hearn to talk negatively about another event. Eddie was standing between Manny Pacquiao, a very small, statured 45 year old man, and his next opponent, a 27 year old matchroom fighter who has had issues getting licensed to the UK <laughs> to box again. It's incredibly sad. He spends more time speaking about other people's business than he does turning to his own. Hey, Rob, I'm a fan. I'm like a fan of Bedarian. <laughs> We're team Bedarians. <laughs> Winter is coming. <laughs> Bedarian driving out with a DeLorean shortly, man. Breathing that <laughs> fire at Eddie. <laughs> That's amazing. Because I, I was I was wondering, was that Eddie talking about Manny Pacquiao? And I was like, he's hardly saying that when Conor Ben's lined up to fight him. But it was actually, oh, that's amazing. There you go. He got caught out. Um, another one here from Ian Dark, Savage, like Wellington. He says they could use this Saudi boxing venue for American astronaut training because there is no atmosphere. <laughs> Been noisier fight, fight nights at Bracknell Leisure Centre. <laughs> <laughs> They need a fan man, don't they? Fan man flying around there testing <laughs> gravity. And you even had Uncle Frank trying to get the natives riled up about the fucking robbery and like ball, by the way. <laughs> he won the fight! He won the fucking fight! <laughs> Didn't he, lads? Yeah. He won the fight! Yeah, right. Fucking, fucking brick, brick pot loose to <laughs> yeah. man. It's about as loud as Ricky Graville's local in there, man. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> you have fucking Stanley Kubrick stage a fake moon landing in the background. <laughs> 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 what about that, buddy? Speak that shit, didn't they, Matty? <laughs> oh, I've heard, of, I've heard of that. Story. They never went to the moon, buddy. Did they? Why did they go back? Like, did oh, they jumps up there every weekend? Do Ryanair flights up there for fucking ninety nine euro <laughs> to drop you off near the moon if you could get up there? Like, fucking load of shit that is, isn't it? Up on the moon. Uh, Give me a break. Costs a lot of money to go there, and what are you getting out of the journey? <laughs> <laughs> Or oh, into space. Hey, yeah. hey, Rob, hey, Rob, two year old Bob. Hold, hold on, Steve. Hold on, Steve. <laughs> Rob, I got to ask you. Like, we, we all know. Moon rocks. Hold on, Rob. We all know that the moon isn't actually made week. out of cheese. But would you eat the moon if it were made out of barbecue spare ribs? Depends how, depends how stone there is. It's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> There's some background music here, Matty, called Into Space. Yeah. There you are. Just tell me. <laughs> If you would eat the moon if it were made of ribs and we could Hit the bong, on. Matty, then dance with that action, mate. Are they ribs that came from fucking suspicious human mutilations? I don't know. I hate the fact that you guys don't get my SNL reference, but it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, because they don't have it on here. Fuck off. You get our Carnation Street references. <laughs> you don't even know who Jim McDonald is. You fucking dickhead. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. buddy. You, you, lucky you, lucky you, lucky you, that's you cancelled in the no, comments now, bro. Lucky you guys. You get six episode seasons of Rowan Atkinson in a period piece. Hooray. <laughs> that was a while ago, to be fair. Google <laughs> <laughs> Jerry McCann, mate. <laughs> hey, I'm just upset at you guys for not giving me the value of the week last week. I flew thousands of miles for what I was planning to do not to happen and finding out at the venue. I thought that if there's any time in my life that I had my, earned it. The light to you as well, mate. The fucking light I thought they took it easy on you last week, to be honest. Mate, I was a wee bit kind of disparaging. I must admit, I was just having a bit of a laugh over it. I was just at yeah. your misfortune, obviously. But <laughs> the lie to you, mate, that happened to her fucking night, the, the night before the weigh in. Yeah, well, the thing is, when it comes to irritations of the cornea, it can clear up quicker. It's not like getting an eye to an object in yeah, there. Yeah, but she lied to you, mate. It's what, hey, I had a great time in Puerto Rico, and they you refunded fight, the I, tickets. I hope I hope you're allowed to do anal, by the way, like Donny, because I'll tell you this much, but it was a wasted trip yeah. to the fucking didn't he? What? Well, Andy, <laughs> yes. you've teed us up perfectly. You heard him. <laughs> you teed us up perfectly here oh, good. <laughs> for the final clip. Uh, you need to say more. Here we go. We really know you, Alicia. We really know you. Niggas really know you. Niggas didn't really ran through you, nigga. Stop it, nigga. Sonny Fredrickson ran through you. Uh, Bunny ran through you. Yeah, Robert Easter ran through you, boy. Hold on. Dominic Dalton ran through you. Hold on. Montana Love. Oh, <laughs> Rob. Oh, we better step in here, mate. Serve your Mrs. Honor because fucking AB is fucking slandering her name, mate. <laughs> hey, maybe you do have a chance, Rob. <laughs> I've always got a chance, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it looks well, doesn't he, AB? To be fair, still alive, dog. 
I would. <laughs> <laughs> I think AB needs to attend a moratorium about slut shaming. Um, he's a what is he, 12? Like, he's fucking 12 years of age. Like, he's listening poor AB's body count there. She's maybe, I don't know, maybe she's made some bad decisions. I don't know if I look at her the same now. Um, you lying bastard. You told me you went like Ross Geller when he fucking seen uh, uh, Jennifer Aniston getting taken out for that, that, that prom date. <laughs> You standing there with a fucking bunch of flowers looking down like a oh, biscuit or something. That, that was you. That's no, what you told me. You were disappointed. No, but I think I think I, she she might be getting scratched off the laminated list, seeing as we're doing Friends references after Robert <laughs> Easter Jr. I don't know if I can forgive her. Do you know what I mean? So much wasting talent, like too much time hanging out with AB. Uh, but AB is talking about posting footage, which could what? land him in some serious <laughs> hot water. I don't know if he's up on the revenge porn laws, but um, it could be another night in the slammer. But let's see it. So um, fucking Rob's over here like fucking Donald Trump, like, Russia, if you have the videotape, you could just send it this way. No, 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 it, no, 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 use no, it. no, 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 it's, it's, it's Lance Armstrong you're thinking about, mate. Extraordinary allegations require extraordinary proof. So... <laughs> 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 oh, that's fucked up. I tell you what, though, right, <laughs> Lance Armstrong... He was doping and all everyone. So what? You fucking had testicular cancer. He had his balls lobbed off. He's cycling up a hill. Who gives a fuck? What did he care for? Like, he raised a lot of money for cancer. Let him, <laughs> let him fucking take as many juice as he wants. Just the yeah. fuck away. So he's fucking cycling. He's not hitting yeah. anyone. What did he have <laughs> left? What, I mean, what did he have left after that? Just fingering Cheryl Crow? Let the man live. Remember, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. bro, that, that, that video of him fucking with the two hood rats, eh? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man, it was a baby's album. He'd be fucking parking out there. <laughs> right. I think I've got one final video from Ricky Gaville. Oh, Tyson that, that one thing. Okay, no, no, not one of them, thankfully. Tyson Fury talking talking smack about his excellency. Here we go. <laughs> what apparently it wasn't it. It wasn't it, oh, Turkey. No. It was it was Teresia, apparently one of the AG's guys, apparently it was. Oh right. <laughs> Play it again for Matty. He called him a useless C nut. Play it again, mate. Let me hear it. Hang on, here we are, Matty, have a listen. <laughs> oh dear, going in, going in. Right. Yeah, he's, he's gonna get beheaded. Yeah, hopefully. Well, I've done enough. Uh, anything from you, Andy? <laughs> yeah, a couple, mate. Uh, one for Ray, Ray Vargas. Apparently, Nick Ball's an Arab, apparently. So, uh, I don't know if anybody caught that. <laughs> that was post. great. Apparently, yeah, it was like... He was back he was, out. He was his own backyard. Oh, yeah, he went to his own. That's why he's back out. <laughs> fucking Nick Ball's an Arab, apparently. So, he's, a, he's the whitest Arab I've ever fucking seen in my puff. Nick Ball, 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 baby. Similarities um, between fucking Saudi Arabia and Bootle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if anybody caught um, Israel Mar- Marjimov's um, post-fight interview, but when he did the, at the end, and he's in native tongue, it was like a fucking Oscar acceptance speech, man. Jesus Christ! <laughs> and then and then AD asked if we can translate to you know, uh, translate that for us. I'm like, fucking let it fuck off, man. You know, move on. Uh, Eddie Connor, needed his little translator, mate, who writes everything down on the notepad. Aye, uh, the Spanish boy. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, one for Connor Ben, man, he's like, I think he's saying like a uh, rumors he's in advanced talks or something like that with Manny Parker. I saw the Arabia next and he's quoted, he's saying, I can't confirm or deny it. If there's anyone who can make fights happen, it's his ex- excellently, excellently here in Saudi Arabia. The public want that fight. So for me, it's a matter of giving the public that fight. I'm like, I think you and I and Rob that were all thinking, what fucking public is he talking about here, by the way? Because I ain't interested in that fucking fight. Nobody is. Surely to Christ. No. Well, Eddie is, obviously. I should not be Darby in anyway. Yeah. Uh, I think Rob mentioned <laughs> it, the, the one the one for Nagano for firing out the warning to Tyson Fury. Um, if I lose my shit, man, you're fucked. So basically, yeah, one, that was fucking quality, man. <laughs> I love that one. And uh, I don't know if you missed this one, Steve, but Box Nation's back. Did you know that? Apparently so, yeah. Uh, back this week. Um, um, I don't know if uh, IFL Umar... Fame is involved, but anyway, they've got exclusive content. Already got something like sixty thousand subscribers or whatever it is on YouTube. No bad after the start there. What was it? Two, three days ago. 
Well, it didn't he didn't he take over Box Nation, then changed it to like a different name or something, and said, "Oh, this is my new venture," and then it went back to Box Nation. I, I'm not really sure what's happening there. I don't know, mate. We need to ask. I think, be, but, but I think I'm a good bunch of guys that's running it. Though. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah, I'd say so. Definitely. Uh, anything else, Andy, from you? That's it, mate. Lovely, jubbly. Thank you, Matthew. Anything from you, please? Nothing I can think of. Ooh, uh, Roberto. Just the Ryan stuff, like just all that shit, like. Oh, um, what prompted that fucking AB versus AB beef there, Broner and and Baumgartner? Was that Bill Haney was seen training Baumgartner, and then AB posted out, uh, "Baby, if you want to get better, stay away from Bill Haney. He's just gonna put you like a hole on the whole stroll." Because you know the way Bill was supposed to be a pimp from Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know if anybody watches the podcast with uh, rappers Cameron and Mace. It's really fucking big in America. They do a lot of NBA stuff, but they delve into boxing occasionally. Um, and Cameron had said, you know, he thought Haney lost the Lomachenko fight, but they had Bill Haney as a guest, and he was fucking gold. I finally understand Bill Haney's position because Devin is not that outspoken, and he's not that great of a trash talker, and he's not that charismatic, but Bill, Bill Haney kind of tries to play the promotional role the don king of the fucking devin haney you know he's that component like but he went down there like, and he was fucking flaming up floyd he was flaming up ab he said um you never know goofy and you see he said you see adrian broner on on youtube and you think you know goofy until you meet him in real life and then you really know what fucking goofy is <laughs> um, Flaming AB, flaming Floyd, saying it's over for Floyd and all. He's a bitter old man. Haney beat oh, his one ass for Floyd as well, man. Stadium. He's, he's there in Switzerland on his own and getting pictures taken in London, standing up against a fucking phone box. Floyd, yeah, do you how many people and dogs have pushed up against that fucking phone box, man? Yeah, like it's like <laughs> you're not stunting on Europeans with places that we can go to for fucking 1995 on Ryanair if we book up six weeks in advance. Do you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, yeah. for that shit. Like, um, but. Yeah, that whole fucking that whole thing and that subplot, obviously with uh, with with Ryan Garcia, Oscar actually was fucking as Oscar. Yeah, do you think Ryan Garcia is going to be sanctioned? Do you think this fight is going to be sanctioned? Is this fight going ahead? And Oscar was like, "Hey, I spoke to Ryan Garcia last night on um on a uh, video uh, video call. <laughs> it's like you can't fucking come come to grips with the technology." He's focused, man. He looks great. Look, he's going to start camp. He's uh, made promises to cut out the drinking. So this fight's happening, man. I'm like, this fight's not fucking happening, isn't it? <laughs> and he's going to be fighting a replacement, isn't he? Like, this fight oh, man. It's, it's, I've, I've seen some people reckon as well. As he's, he's acting up this way because he's trying to get his contract with Oscar. I'm like, oh, fucking oh, give and, and Fucking gold, a gold exchange between Big Bill Haney, who's the new Don King, uh, and A B on Instagram Live, uh, where you now there was I couldn't ref I couldn't even try to do the impression because there's too many N words and I don't want to blank myself, you know what I mean? Like what it was like fucking basically ended with uh Broner saying, Come see me, come see me, and oh guys, see he's not taking this fight, come see me. And Bill Haney being like, Yeah, Adrian Broner said, Well, we might see A B versus Devin Haney as the potential replacement before I guys see uh fucking you know what I mean? Get shot from the grassy knoll or whatever the fuck happens to him. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if it's just, I would love to, I would love to know what weight A B is as just now actually, because I thought he looked quite slimish as such on the face. Oh, A B was threatening to send the goonies basically from the streets. Do you know what I mean? He was like, I'm in the streets, you know where I'm at, you know, oh, I I'm in his desire and all this. He's off his head. So. Right. Let's go through them quickly before we get out of here. So we had Big John in Australia playing us in. We had AB going in on AB. Uh, Broner on Baumgardner. We had uh, Eddie shitting on celebrity fights while trying to put one on at the same time. But Fury shitting on his excellency, allegedly, or maybe somebody else. Tony turning up at Leicester. We're glad he's okay. The pundits on the zone. Andy Lee talking about Huey in his prime. Farage and Chisora, elusive Raf doing some elusive research on Fury's photographs. We had Nakisa Bidarian, uh, Jake Paul's manager, our new favourite manager in boxing, and Ian Dark as well. Plus all the other ones, Andy, that the boys have thrown in, including yourself. Who are you going for this week? Um, I like the Ian Dark's comment, actually. What a way to shit on it, eh? I would love to have heard him in the commentary last night if he was working that show. I wouldn't have been as, as, uh, as vocal about it. It would have been interesting. Um... 
Yeah, just the whole Saudi Max angle. Actually of those... the hilarious scenario in my head of him actually saying that on the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember the time he took fucking Uncle Frank to task in that era with some of the Kozagi opponents? Fucking hell. Um, fuck it, I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for Conor Ben, actually. What, what public are we talking about here? Like, exactly. Who wants to see him fight Pacquiao? Nobody does. You know, it's just all about money for him now because he's got to make that. He's got to make up the losses for all the fucking K- you know, lawyers that he had on the case and that. So, so it is money. Okay, uh, Connor Ben gets the vote for Andy. Who are you going for, Matty? Yeah, let's go, Connor. He's a dick. Oh, two for Connor Ben. He's he's having a good week. Uh, what about you, Bob? I'd nearly give it to Connor Ben in advance because if he got a victory over Manny Pacquiao, I imagine he'd like. Oh. Kneel to the floor and do that unbearable thing, you know, that kneel to the floor that some fighters do when they won like a, a fucking lopsided fucking decision that they were supposed to win, like to get some fucking trinket belt. He'd be like kneeling on the ground, holding his hands up around his head as he's finally we vindicating all of his that at the fucking expense of fucking ring legend Manny Pacquiao, who's only in the sport because he needs to probably pay a tax bill or something. So, yeah, I give it to him, but AB never lets us down, man. Broner, he's a fucking idiot. Like, is he, what the fuck is he talking about? Like, he's a fucking grown man. I don't know, man. This guy, he's just fucking, he's the gift that keeps on giving. Like, the new just... AB and Don King fucking combination. Let's keep it rolling. Like, because this guy is fucking on the cusp of another big fight sometime soon. Just very briefly, Steve, on, on, on that Ben situation. See, was it no British officials in, in, in the BBC? Yeah, BBC, it was all it was, board. Yeah. Right, so. How is that going to work if he still technically hasn't cleared up his license and issue? How is he going to get on that card yeah. in Saudi Arabia? They'll need to get um, somebody else on the license. Exactly, they'll have to have some other kind of uh, jurisdiction, won't they? Yeah, they would need to yeah, and, and their own officials, which... I think it's a Jordan or Bahrain. Yeah. yeah. Bring in the Maltese. I see they're trying to get officiated now with the, with the board oh, now as well. God, not them. Anyway... Mm-hmm. Congratulations. I'm going to give it to AB as well. So it's two for two. CB and AB, Adrian Broner and Connor Ben, joint winners this week. They might end up fighting at some point, but they are the value. Five, six, three. Congratulations, boys. Back to you, Matty. Thank you, Steve, for that. That was a, it was a fun-filled adventure. That that video, fuck me, that was going on long. I, I feel bad for Australia right now. I'm sure they'll be sending them back shortly. <laughs> I'm to wait alone from that flight, man. <laughs> I... I'd like to thank everybody who was in the chat today as well as their super chatters and their Jamie and Beat Bop Boop. We appreciate you all. Um, and uh, we hope that you guys will join us here next week as we are lurching ever closer uh, to that uh, Tim Zhu, Keith Thurman fight, uh, as well as uh, uh, Liam Wilson against uh, Oscar Valdez, which I will be attending and I think is going to be a kick ass fight. Um, that happens. Yeah, no, I know. I curse everything. What fight on that card is doomed? Anyhow, tune in in a couple of weeks and find out more. Um, but it's been fun for Steve Wellings, Andy Patterson, Rob Kelly. I've been your host, Maddie. We'd also like to thank uh, Chuck Wu for coming on and Ahmed. We appreciate you both. Um, and again, we will see you fine folks uh, next week. We'll never forget. I think that's good about me. Go to we want to be honest, yeah. Crying like a little bitch. I've never met a fucking so that can fight me. I, I fell asleep. I, I fell asleep. You're a fucking bum. You're a fucking asshole. Drunk or fucking stealth skin. But allegedly, Oscar Rivas has has, has failed has failed a test. Seven year old. Seven year old. I will fucking smash fucking you. I hope you fucking die. Be safe. I love boxing sounds. Simple as that.